<laughs> All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Abaraxas Precipice, Adapus Fate, a charity one shot of the Expanse role playing game benefiting the World Central Kitchen. I got it right the first time. I'm always impressed when I get it right the first time. Uh, thank you for joining we us. We won't tell them how many uh, raw takes we had of that. That's cool. That's cool. It was Keep rough. Going. Keep going. That was rough, man. That yep. was uh, uh, 17. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, we're going to play around the Expanse today, uh, hang out, and raise some money for uh, World Central Kitchen, which is a great organization. I got some more words to say about that a uh, little bit after we I introduce everybody. Um, this game is the Expanse, and we're playing about seven years before the books start, just to give everyone an idea of what's going on. Um, but I do want to uh, take a moment and give everyone on the screen an opportunity to introduce themselves. I'm John Baltina, I guess it's in the names there. Um, I don't have an alias today. Uh, but then we go and start with the Brady Bunch thing of with our good friend Josh. Hey. Yeah, hey, uh, my name is Josh Simons. You can find me on the internet everywhere at Joshua M. Simons. Uh, I'm the community manager over at Demiplane. Uh, and uh, aside from that, you know, I'm just happy to be back. Uh, we get uh, to see Marv uh, before uh, he met up with, with the main cast and storyline of uh, Abraxas Precipice, which is kind of fun to, to see a character before and we've already done an after, so. Uh, we did do an fun. after. You, you did survive though, you did survive. I did so survive, is, he so. He does have a future. I know I'm we not gonna die on this show. You. So yeah, right. Okay. Josh has plot armor. Exactly. Damn it. Listen, everybody yeah. He's wearing that Josh. shiny, shiny Actually, plot armor. Everybody has plot armor except for Jen. Uh, right. speaking, of, <laughs> speaking of which. Um, so reassuring. Just, I just uh, I like you know, spill the facts out, but speaking of facts, let's hear uh, from our good friend Jen. Hello, uh, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on socials as at Dreamwisp or streaming on Twitch as Dreamwisp. Dreamwisp Jen. Um, I am a an author, a uh, performer in tabletop. I'm a disability consultant. Um, I am part of the cast of Children of Arte on Tuesdays on Demi Plain RPG. Um, I have written for D and D uh, and Paizo and a bunch of other wonderful folks. Haunted West. So I love games, and I'm very excited to be here today. And happy birthday, John! Oh, thank you, Yay. thank you. Yay, and I, I know we're coming off of B Day's birthday too, so it's there's like a hey, whole, happy birthday, B Day! We're, we're, we got we're, we're, we're chain linking the uh, the birthdays here. Let me think. Is Alex Ward is on the seven? Is on Alex Ward mm. is on the. Six, no, 17th. I'm the 18th. Uh, Becca and Lady Danger are the 20th. Hope is in, on the... Hope, Hope was Monday. So Hope was, was, Monday. Hope was the 19th. Yeah. And February, man. Yeah. There's lots there, and lots of birthdays. There, there was somebody else this week. Deborah. So yeah, that, that's Deborah the was uh, in the last two weeks. Yep. Happy oh. birthday to all my fellow Everyone. Aquarius Pisces and Aquarius Pisces cusp. <laughs> Love it. Thank you guys. Uh, Goldie. Oh, and I'm playing Tamsin. Oh, sorry. I'm I didn't Tamsin. Say. Yeah. Sorry. yeah, I'm playing Tamsin. <laughs> I hack. Goldie. Uh, oh. Hello. <laughs> is it my turn yet? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Goldie. Uh, you can find me on Twitter for who knows how much longer at Goldie Chan or on Instagram at Goldie Cylon. And I definitely have a Twitch that has five followers and I have no idea what my handle is, um, but you can find me there as well. And I am not a regular cast member on any show. So this is a special appearance for my friend, John, Aww. and all of my other amazing Twitter mutuals who are currently <laughs> on screen with me. I'm so excited to play with them. I'll be playing Cecilia and she has a few tricks up her sleeve. I, and as I've mentioned before, Cecilia is the most terrifying character I've ever had on my game. And we've had people that are like, we've had people that are hardcore killers and I am terrified of Cecilia. Um, Shots so fired, Shots it's, it's fired. It's impressive guys. Uh, Goldie is, Goldie, Goldie does it only so often and unleashes. Uh, it is pent up. Um, next, a uh, mighty force below me here is the one I, whose name I love because it is a command, B Dave. Um, uh, whenever you're ready, let us know. 
It's, 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 I'm, I'm, I have to go full Randy Orton with that uh, with that introduction there. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Be Dave Walters. Uh, you can find me all over the interweb wherever fine streaming content can be located. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't point out two things. One, fill out Dr. Emily's survey. I'm pointing. I don't know if I'm pointing towards her, but fill you out are. the survey. That yeah. Professional. See that? Professional. Uh, <laughs> and uh, two, uh, I wouldn't be here today. Not for Goldie Chan. Goldie was the first person to put me on. So I love Goldie with my whole heart, heart, heart. That's all. Yeah, that's it. That's what I have to say. Oh, but I I suppose I'm playing Fred Johnson. And I will tell you all, I did do some homework, but I do not have an encyclopedic knowledge of the expanse. So I'm going to do my best. This is my, I was going to say this is my bold reimagining of Fred Johnson, but usually that's an excuse when something's about to be terrible. So it's not (laughs) at all an attempt at a bold reimagining, but might be a bold reimagining. I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And I, I, I have a lot of trust in UB Dave, so uh, this, uh, I would not. I would not. I would not allow someone to come play my game as Colonel Frederick Lucius Johnson. Arbitrarily, it is so. Also, also, I think I may have the most plot armor. So <laughs> by, far, yes, to, by far, yes, by far. By far, you got a few decades. Yeah, you got behind me. Everyone. You got a few decades. Yeah, it's gonna uh, be fine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then uh, last we got our good friend, uh, the professor, Emily Friedman, please. Hi, I am Dr. Emily Friedman. I'm an associate professor of English at Auburn University. That means I have tenure and I do what I want, which means that I'm usually on the other side of the screen watching actual plays as one of the growing number of folks who are studying this form. So this will be in the chapter of my next book. Um, wow. I have been here once before as Esther Harper, a nightmare shadow version of myself. Uh, She's fine. She's lovely. She's currently a graduate student. Excited for today. I love the origin story. I I love the origin story. Um, And I'm curious where it goes. Um, All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, In addition, tonight we have a giveaway courtesy of Dragon Burn. Uh, They have been kind enough to donate a very nice uh, called Nat 20 Vorpal Sword uh, Dice Box. Uh, Jen has one. Mine is a different. uh, different, uh, Mine is my logo, but they're they're so beautiful and they're so well made and they are so getting lost in my green screen. It is it, it, is, it is big. Uh, yeah. And they they're disappear impressive. with magic. Yeah. <laughs> but they're they're so beautiful and also the dice catapult is like the yes. coolest thing ever. And that's yes. coming along too. Yep, so dice catapult and a dice box. Uh the key word secret tonight is Aberaxis. Uh, you can't miss it to the middle of the screen at the bottom. Um, so I want to make sure everybody gets a shot to, uh, enter, uh, but go ahead and do that. And I'll pull a winner at the end of the stream for that. And by far the most important element of our stream today is this. We are playing for World Central Kitchen today. Uh, the donate link is there in the chat. You can go and follow that and donate. Your donations can affect the game, give some re-rolls here and there. I already bought myself personally a re-roll. Um, and, uh, so I'm not cheating because, you know. I don't want to suspect, but they do a lot of great work. Uh, They help provide meals for people in disaster zones all over the world, everywhere. Um, For me personally, it's it's a big deal. Uh, Last year when Goldie was on, we played for uh, Ukrainian relief. And then this last January in my area here in the Central Valley, we had flooding and a World Central Kitchen showed up down the street from me and fed my colleagues, fed my friends, fed people in my community. And it was the least I can do to give back to them uh, for this event. So uh, I want to uh, thank everyone that donated today ahead of time. But please, uh, we have our goal. We get some donations. And thank you very much, people. We're, we're already at 140 out of 500. We're getting there. Amazing. We got, we got some more time going. If you um, want to know more about World Central Kitchen, there's a documentary on Disney Plus directed by Ron Howard called We Feed People. And it will give you hope for humanity. Um, Chef Jose Andres is the one who founded the organization. He saw stuff and went, chefs know how to get it done. Um, They just kind of cut through the red tape and get it done. And they went straight into a hurricane uh, relief area and uh, before the Red Cross could even get in there. And they fed 30,000 people in the first, I think, three days. Um, And then it was hundreds of thousands more in the next couple of days. They've gone to earthquakes. They, they, anywhere that people need help they are there before anyone else. It's the most incredible organization. I, I'm really, really passionate about them because I've been following him since before the organization existed. But um, please check out the work they do. It's it's phenomenal work. 
post yeah. all of them on Twitter. Yeah, yeah follow, follow them on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I would also say, uh, whenever we do these uh, charity games like this, a lot of times, if we're lucky, a lot of numbers start flying around. And there was plenty of times in my life that I didn't have an extra $5 to give to something. So I will say every little bit helps. Yes. Every dollar helps. Every signal boost helps. Uh, pointing out that we're here doing this. All of it. We're all in it together. So thank you for tuning in. And thank you, World Central Kitchen. Awesome. Thank you guys. I, and I'm glad to have, uh, once again, I may have the encyclopedic knowledge of the expanse, but I don't have the encyclopedic knowledge of World Central Kitchen. And Jen, thank you for like, that's actually really cool information. I love it. And yeah, please go check the documentary. I, I'm probably going to watch it with my wife actually probably tomorrow. So bring tissues. <laughs> it's I within five like minutes. Maybe, you'll be sobbing. Maybe that's our next stream. What if we just watch that documentary together Do live and comment on it? <laughs> I'm, I'm in. in. I'm down. All right, we're gonna run our opening credits and then we'll be right back with Abrax Presbus Adapus Fate. Series Station. Series Station is like the hub of the belt. It is the most advanced station, the biggest one. A million people come into it, a million people leave it every day, including the four on the edge here. Marv Valentine, Tamsin, Esther, and Cecilia. The four of you have been uh, somehow made your way to a room on this station, kind of a, a, a back room, if you will. One of the places where they used to run conduits through and no one really wants to set up shop in there. No one wants to live in there, but it's just kind of a, an older room with a lot of infrastructure and stuff like that too. You might have um, come here of your of, of hearing word or something of an opportunity. Some of you may have been um, <clears throat> strong-armed into coming here. Um, but regardless, you are in this room with a single table, some uh, magnetically locking chairs to the floor. And even like the padding on the walls coming off where, you know, to the safety features and stuff like that too. But the one name that has buzzed in your head being brought here is the name Anderson Dawes, the man that runs the OPA on Siri Station. Somehow, some way, all roads on this station lead back to his influence that's not necessarily always seen. Shortly, uh, as you kind of Ponder each other, and feel free if you want to ponder each other right now. Uh, <laughs> if you have any word you want to say about this circumstance. They mana handle anyone else getting in here? N no, no. I. This was an invitation. Like, an this invitation? An invitation? Everyone. Yeah, it sounds like everybody maybe got here the way they got here. Um, but I really hope we can all work together. I'm, I'm really hoping from the bottom of my heart that we can all be friendly. Works for yeah. me. Sure. Sure, of course. We're all 
as you guys kind of sit there and, and ponder it, um, the, the the door opens and you see a uh, a Belcher woman and a Belcher man uh, walk in. Um, the the woman's wearing kind of a, a, a flight suit with like a vest over it, a few little patches here, and you can see a. a oh, yeah? few, yeah, they doesn't really say anything as you as you as you do say this to them. They, they kind of just like eyeballs you. They seem to be kind of on on business, we'll say. Uh, doesn't really respond to your call, but then a man enters off to the other side as well. The woman's clearly armed with a pistol at her side, a uh, revolver, but into the door you hear kind of a jovial tone, um, and you see that there's two other people on the other side of the door coming through with the light kind of coming in. And the light in this room is not full spectrum; it's it's dim and a little damp. But you see, you see two going, um, two people talking to each other. Um, one of them, uh, you can clearly hear, kind of has the belter tone. Says, um, "So, Fred, what do you, what do you make of this? Do you think this will, this will plan out for us?" Well, failure is not really an option, is it? <laughs> Never do it to you, Michael. Michael Bang, and he like slaps you. Guys, you kind of see him pat him on the back here. And as the the two men enter the room, you see. Side by side, uh, recognizably, uh, one Anderson Dawes, a man about a little over six feet tall. Uh, his face has a uh, kind of a pock, pock scarring on it. He has massive scars around his neck um, from uh, radiation, from the cheaper space suits that he wore as a child or as a youth. And next to him is a man named Fred Johnson. Some of you may know this man, some of you may not, but those that do know him, he has a reputation that can swing wildly. Um, Dawes and, and Johnson enter the room and uh, he kind of ponders over the four of you. Uh, is anyone sitting or is everyone standing or? I'm definitely standing. Mm -hmm. I'm I ready imagine to go. I'm seated. I'm seated is, by a terminal. Is there a notable place where it's clear that the power position is like the person yes. who would be organizing this. It would, it would be the I, I don't know how you roll etiquette, but it would be the the chairs nearest to the door, which there, there is a pair then, actually. Then I'm sitting on the lengthwise table, mm -hmm. proximate to that. And uh, Tamsin, you're, you're sitting there with your data pad uh, messing with it. There are no terminals in this room, and actually the reception. This room seems to have like blocked off reception. It's isolated from the from the mm -hmm. network of series. Um, it is a secure location. You suspect that this is been easily used for uh, a variety of nefarious purposes on the station. Because <laughs> um, uh, it seems like a good place to do it. Speaking of which, um, Anderson says, uh, please, uh, my guest, sit, sit. And he, he has a, a small box about yay big. He placed it off the side of the table there real quick. It, it's just an opaque box, nothing, to, no, not discernible, no markings on it. Um, and uh, it says, uh, an opportunity has presented itself to us, and I would one I'd like to share with my friends, new and old. Well, let me be first to say, I am so thankful for being invited, uh, my good friend Anderson, and my even better friend, Fred. I really hope that we can work together well, and we can make whatever it is you want to happen, happen. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Yes, the 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 amount of um, influence and 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 vision that people are seeing about what's going on here is extending day by day by day. And it's because of people like you, Cecilia, because of people like you. But when people like Fred Johnson come and help us, oh, oh, there is no bounds to where we will go. And that that is why we are here today. Why are we here today? Ah, <laughs> uh, it's good to meet you, Miss Hopper. You, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> your uh, endeavors here and access have been most generous. Do you not agree? I, I, I try to understand as best I can. Hmm. And people like Fred Johnson have been the tip of the spear in showing the way to the innards of what's what goes on here and how we live and what we are. And you will. Uh, Literally write the book on it, will you not? I sure hope so. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And then, and then we have people from the, our home team, if you call it, our, our good friend Tamsin, uh, who keeps Siri safe, our, our information safe, our air, water, and power safe, our docks safe. 
we, Thank we, you, I appreciate that. We cannot say enough about, about what you do and, and, and the day-to-day of Delta Loda and how they work for each other, how they keep each other eye. Packy. And then, uh, <laughs> kind, of, kind of chuckles, our newest friend, our newest copain, Dr. Marvin the Valentine. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you, 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 my friend, are in a unique position, and I, I, I'm he- grateful for your cooperation here. Well, simply put, the job of any and all of us here is to ensure the future of the belt. My parents did it for me by ensuring that me and my sisters could go forth and live our lives. Fred Johnson does it now by negotiating deals with inner corporations to make sure they do not take advantage of Belta Loda. And all of you have an excellent opportunity today to ensure the future of the belt for a generation, easily. So, are you ready to hear about how you all can help? Always. Yes, sir. Well, you see, and I, Opportunities like this don't don't always come forth, but a new project is on the horizon. One that Innas are doing, Innas are interested in, uh, namely Earthers. And we are in a position to be the ones that make that happen for them. We would like to be the ones in the position to make it happen for them. The, um, you might be familiar with, um, here on the station of people coming and going all the time, but people come with messages. I come with a message from, from my people of the OPA and the liberation of the belt. And other people come with messages of their devotion, their interests, their, their faith. And we, we welcome all these voices to speak. Um, but more precisely, one influence of the of series station of the belt has been the Tycho Corporation for decades. They were the ones to spin up Eros into a, into one of the first spin stations. Series is spun up. This, this, these pipes here were put, these point of pipes, were put here by Tycho. They have made the belt. They were in us, but they made this rock work. And we have a good working relationship with them. They understand what we need. They're up to the challenge. When we ask them to spin a station, they figure out how to do it. When we say we need our water recycled better, they figure out how to do it. We have an excellent working relationship as Delta Loda with the Tyco Corporation. And we would like to continue to pursue that relationship and enhance it. So here's where the opportunity comes up. And please, if anyone has a question, let me know. Of the messages that have come through here, you might have seen a few, um, we call, they call themselves the missionaries. They come through and they share the message of their faith and the, their, their, their love. And that is okay. We, we are completely welcome to have them be heard and be listened to. But they have come forth and asked for a new endeavor. They wish to seek refuge beyond the system and head out to Tau Ceti in a spaceship and the like. And this is up to them. It is their freedom to do so. I'm not one to stop them. But I am interested in having the contract be awarded to a certain friendly corporation. Is this, is this making sense? Mm-hmm. So, Tycho has Tycho Station, and they would build whatever they need to build out here. That means Java Belt of Lotus. That means a ton of work. Decade, if not more, of work. Learning on the job. Getting better. Making us smarter. Making us stronger. All while in, cooper- on, in cooperation with the Inya Lotus. It's not a problem. But we don't think, I don't think, uh, and, and I think Fred would agree with me, right, that not all the Earth corporations would be as friendly to, to, to our people. Would you not agree, Fred? Hmm. Not at all. So, when the 
Latter-day Saints say they want to go to Tal Seti, who am I to stop them? Who am I? But I would like to enable them to working with the Tycho Corporation. You know, and they are trusted people. They make us breathe. They help us, drink, eat, you know, drink, keep us alive. Why shouldn't we extend that favor to, to these people as well? Anderson, I'm going to stop you mm. right there. Oh, I, please. You know, I, I'm i so thankful that all of us wonderful people are included uh, in this conversation. But what I want to know is, and you'll understand this because I am somebody who's struggling to really make it work here. What's in it for us? <laughs> oh, it comes down to the, to the, the personnel, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, I would be indebted to you, Cecilia. I would be indebted of to all course. of you. Provide you more opportunities. This, these are not opportunities just for belters out there in general, but specific people. So perhaps um, I could make arrangements and provide you some um, oversight of elements of this job. They will need to go to other stations. Uh, Palace and Hygieia will have to provide resources and Perhaps you would be interested in um, overseeing some of these operations. I mean, I would love to get my hands on. I, I would love to help with Hygieia, obviously. Mm. I would love it. Exactly, exactly. See, this is about the Loda that knows that when when her bowl is full, when, when her bowl, the more she gives, the fuller her bowl will be. That's what she knows. And that's what she's doing. This is less than we all need to pay attention to. I, I guess the, the, the question is less what's in it for me than how, how why us? I, well, I can understand some of the other people in this room, but but I, I, I'm not sure what I can offer. Uh, Casey? You, you, you study uh, cultures, right, Miss Hopper? Yes, sir. And you know about how in your, you're from Earth and you know how they work and you know how they think? Well, Sometimes. We are about to go talk to uh, some Earth corporations, some Earthers, and Earth members of an Earth religion. We could use your expertise in the field to understand where they are coming from, to make sure that we connect in an appropriate way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is this the task you're up for? Yeah. Oh, excellent, 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 I love it, excellent. The, Mr. DeValentine, perhaps you are of concern too in this in this regard. What would your role? Yeah, uh, what's a physicist involved in contract negotiations? <laughs> well, you see, there are several bidders for this uh, project. And um, I, we need someone to be able to evaluate the viability of the engineering of these projects. Do you see where you're coming into this? Sure, sure. So you want me to go in and just assure him that uh, Tycho's going to no. be able to meet their needs? Or even find out which ones will not meet their needs. Or perhaps even ensure certain ones will not meet their needs. Wait. Now, just to be clear, right, as a scientist, I'm not out here to sabotage anybody. You're not suggesting oh, that, are no, you? no, no. But, I mean, should they have a plan that has a fault in it, would it not be appropriate for you to tell these people prior to them committing thousands of their people to a, a, a fate like uh, Solomon Epstein? I, I can appreciate uh, where you're coming from. Okay. My good friend Fred wishes to chime in. Um... I'm rather observant. Do do I see any evidence that uh, the doctor has been manhandled? Does he look disheveled or, or bruised to me? Oh yeah, you you know for a fact. He Let's was say, he was the he was according to what you know he was the only one they could get at this time that had the expertise they needed. <laughs> doctor, um, I apologize if you were. Um, mm, mistreated in your delivery here. I assure you that won't happen again on my watch, but as you can see, quite a lot is riding on this, and we do need your help. 
I can and I appreciate. Sort of smooth his shirt out just slightly while I'm talking to him. I, I can appreciate the uh, situation and uh, yeah, unlike some uh, folks where I come from who would not be interested in, in seeing uh, Belters benefit from some kind of deal like this, I'm open to, to assisting here. Don't get me wrong. I just uh, want to make sure that there are no uh, ethical concerns on my part. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Celia, Cecilia, um, doctor, um, I think if there's going to be any ethical concerns, we, we probably should cross that now because uh, you didn't volunteer for this like some of us, and you do come from a place that may not have a vested interest in seeing this succeed. So uh, I guess to assuage myself, and I'm sure your would-be teammates here, what exactly do you need to guarantee your enthusiastic cooperation? You know, it's no secret, I haven't made it a secret, that I'm interested in developing new ways that we could, um, uh, well, let's just say improvements to propulsion technology. <laughs> and uh, Daw, I would be- Dawes laughs, actually, when you say that. Interested in uh, access to some of your uh, research prototypes in order to continue to help in that endeavor. Uh, I am, after all, a man of science, and if there's some way that we could uh, work together to better all of humanity, then I can't see a reason why I would not be interested in this, so long as, you know, I can have time to tinker and uh, play with uh, engines upon completion of this mission. And, and aren't you interested in seeing what these giant organizations have come up with on ways to get to Tau Ceti 12 light years out? But sure, your curiosity must be uh, in Pete. I, I'm certainly interested. I understand theoretically what they're trying to do and think I have an idea of what it is that I'll see there, but uh, <laughs> I would not mind seeing it up close in person. Exactly, and then you can, then you can go ahead and tell Fred Johnson and the rest what those things mean. Sure, I could do that. Mm, excellent, excellent. See, they all come around, don't they? They all come around to our cause. One way or another. Exactly. Yep. So, oh, please. So, so, so the systems? Yes, you will be a part of uh, a team of technical experts uh, going forth and representing um, our interests. And what kind of systems do they have? Well, they should have systems that'll ensure that the uh, survival is going to happen, That, mm -hmm. but also that the systems, um, that none of these uh, organizations are keeping secrets from their potential client. You see? I'm sure organizations aren't keeping secrets. No, Who no, would do that? of course not. <laughs> but why not take a look and make sure before they... Um, I, I, oh, I think it's well worthwhile to take a look and make sure. Yes. We do not want... These, these, these people from Earth just to send thousands of people out into the icy cold of space for no reason? We want them to succeed. Of course. Why wouldn't we do that? Why would we not do that? Of course. Um, Sounds like a challenge. Exactly. Yeah? Exactly. <laughs> and Belt a little always up for a challenge. Um, Fred, now you, you've known Dawes for a few years. He's brought you in. He's been a good friend. And you know there's an ulterior motive here. You know there's something about it. This isn't just about bringing in jobs, providing for people. There's something up. I'm going to have you roll your intuition. You wouldn't mind. Hey, Dave. Oh, me? Sorry. Yeah, I Fred, thought, sorry, Fred. Yeah. Oh, no, I thought, some, I thought somebody was rolling against Fred. I apologize. No, no. I'm going to have you, you get your your notice of, of him, and, and you have that ob observant thing, so you get to re-roll this if you dislike the results. Just, I was just reading that. Um, observant, always in awesome in every system. Mm. Agreed, uh, and also in life. 
Um, mm -hmm. that's a uh, 12. Well, okay, and did you add your bonus that too? Uh, no, I didn't, sorry, actually. Yeah. Do the top. You have a pretty good one, like four or six or something like that. Do, and then I can spend points to get an extra two to it if I need. Uh, um, you can also re-roll it, because you do have the observant, uh, talent, so if you want to re-roll it, oh, you're too. Well, currently I'm sitting at 16, oh, Okay, that's I need enough. to re-roll it. No, you're, you know, you know Anton Dawes well enough. So, okay. um, you know that Dawes is not just interested in providing these jobs that is a major element but the other mm -hmm. element too is that he wants access to advanced technology and that mm -hmm. we brought out here um and you know that he has people in every union on series station and probably mm -hmm. further so mm -hmm. no he's he's playing the game mm -hmm. yeah i definitely uh ass assume as such uh, I, I would just say, I, I would look at Aaron and say, I'm sure if this deal can be made to your satisfaction, uh, the benefits will be far reaching to a number of levels. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I see we all in agreement. Um, be sure that uh, you are not just sent off alone. You will be escorted by my good friends here, uh, Danio and Mende. He points to the two belches at the door. Um, um, um Mr. Mr. Dawes? Mm, please. I just have one more question. Um, my advisor has been a little bit concerned about my time to degree, and so I'm not sure, how long is this going to take? Oh, just a few months. Um, okay. Um, he says, but uh, you see, this meeting is not just happening any place, not happening here on series, and not happening in the belt. Um, Mr. Johnson has been, Colonel Johnson has been kind enough to volunteer his ship, the Guy Molinari. Um, it's a freighter, it's comfortable enough. Um, but you will be take that out to the Satarian moon of Titan, where you will go to one of its many excellent resorts to meet with the clients and the um, other competitors. Um, your travel has been booked. You are welcome to the resort, but uh, your ship leaves, well, almost now. Can I go ahead and actually uh, just whisper to the two NPCs that are hanging out by the door? Okay. You can actually talk, as a belter, you can talk with your hands a little bit to them, too. Okay, great. So I'm see. gonna go ahead and, uh, Cecilia's going to go and just talk to them. Okay. Um, and make sure that they're on her side. So they're gonna give her maybe a little bit of extra information, even though they work for Dawes. Okay. Uh, what do you got, you like, you, are, you, are you lying to them or do you want to persuade them? <laughs> uh, I'm going to persuade them. Okay. Yeah, they're, excuse me, they're totally cool. Yeah, go for it. Uh, we're gonna yeah. your persuasion check. Um, uh, okay, I have a plus six. <laughs> plus six. So <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you the numbers on oh, my please. dice right now. <laughs> we have a we have a six, a three, and a one. <laughs> Ten, sixteen. All right. So yeah. Um, what'd you get on the off color die? Uh, I got a one on the okay. off color die. So you you go up to them and you you kind of you know you, you shoot it with them a little bit here, and you've seen them around the station. You know they're OPA yeah. operatives. Um, yeah. they uh, they go you know. Don't worry about it, man. This is basically telling you, this is a simple, simple job. We are there just to make sure if things go wrong to help out and stuff like that too. Honestly, we're not worried about Belter Loda. We more worried, and they're saying there's like a Belter Creel, pretty, pretty thick yeah. Belter Creel. Uh, we more worried about the Inyo Loda's a little bit, uh, just make sure about one of them's, <laughs> looks over kind of eyes, uh, De Valentine. one of them's very important. Got it, got it. Thank you, thank you so much. Hmm. Hmm. We're at, we're on the same in the Cecilia. We're on the same page. We're on absolutely. I'll uh, I'll make sure I have my eye on him too. Um, and, and based on the way they're talking to, like the way they kind of interact, uh, Cecilia, you pick this up and getting closer. You're pretty sure they're married. Okay. So I, you know, I don't want to drive a wedge between two married people, but I definitely want you to just be very careful on this trip you know and i'm happy because i know how it's like to help you guys in any way that you need help as well mm, no problem no problem Daki. so they, they go off and such like that too but they uh they go open the door up and uh they're kind of telling her when it's, it's time to go and anderson uh goes to pat uh goes to talk to fred johnson so 
this is important. And uh, I can think of no one better to negotiate and to ensure success. Yeah. It's uh, a lot's writing on this, and hopefully uh, we can solve it purely with diplomacy, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But when diplomacy fails, we have any kind of gestures of the different people. We have different skill sets to pull on, and your skill set has always been knowing what to apply where. I do lean a little closer to him, and I say, some of these people I know, and some of them I don't. But when we get back, you make sure you do right by them. There's, it kind of takes it like, like, like you've like shot in the heart. Oh. Oh. Mm. Red, no, of course. I will always take care of my own. And those that look out for us, we look out for, absolutely. absolutely. And those that, that don't look out for us, <laughs> well, we'll deal with that at the time, right? Exactly. Exactly. I do just sort of pet him now. <laughs> when you guys have your little moment there. Um, you uh, flash forward, have your stuff, whatever it is. Uh, get on the guy of Molinari. It's a freighter. Uh, it has, it's kind of a weird freighter. And Marv, as you get to it, um, it's older, uh, but it looks like it's actually been well kept. What's weird about the guy of Molinari is that it doesn't have big cargo containers on it, like, like basic cargo like uh, holds on it. It just mounts a bunch of cargo containers, like standard-sized cargo containers, on the side, um, and kind of like a hexagon pattern around it down the down the shaft of the middle of it. So, what's in the center there? Can I get any like indication as to what's taking up the space where cargo holds normally would be? Or um, it's like it's like clamp. They have like clamps and everything. It's like a, it's like a, a network of clamps to hold the cargo containers in. Ah. Uh. Um, so the idea is like they're not moving big stuff, but they're moving a bunch of smaller stuff, basically. Mm. Um, it's an interesting configuration, but it seems, I mean, not economical, but it would work. Sure. Okay. I'm just mental note. And, the, and, and, and by all means, you do have the question of what is in the cargo containers. Uh, as, as uh, this is not a cargo mission. <laughs> uh, of course, you know, uh, not at all asking ominously. Is there something currently in the containers that I would there not is a variety want to be public of knowledge? There is a variety of things. Uh, if you want to make it public, you are welcome to, but you do not have to. Well, um, are there whole, exp expressly things I would not want to be public knowledge? Let me put it this way. Would you? Does Batman tell people what's in his utility belt? Got it. So when I see <laughs> the doctor look around as we sort of come aboard, I just turn in a... I look at the doctor and I say, well, the old girl's got a few tricks up her sleeve. It does I'm clearly, sure you understand. It does clearly have no weapons, no torpedo tubes, uh, obviously no railgun, and no PDC network. So it has no weapons on it at all. How about the tech? Uh, you know the ship. Um, you, you, you've worked it a few times. Uh, you've taken a peek. Um, the various uh, cargo containers are either decoys full of uh, chaff, so like distraction techniques. Um, some of them are emergency skate pods. Uh, some of them contain uh, recon and repair drones. Uh, some of them have data core dumps, so they can like, dump all their data into one to have it float. Uh, one's a basically a makeshift uh, broadcast center. Um, another one, and some of them are breaching pods. They can like board a ship. Um, when I said it's like Batman's utility belt, it's like Batman's utility belt. But no guns, no explosives, and L like Batman. Yeah, like Batman. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I want to turn. I want to make Batman a spaceship, and I did. Uh, so, <laughs> so, but yeah, um, it is set to evade if necessary. But it looks very innocuous. Um, that's about it. Yeah, that's that's it. So it's it's a straightforward. Otherwise, it looks like a straightforward ship. So. Um, Just uh, one quick yeah. question. Sorry, do I uh, do I have a crew for the guy yes. Molinari, or is yeah. it kind of like okay? You have a standard crew of people you know, um, and then your two people that are with you, uh, they act as uh, the executive officers. You are the captain. I would just say, like, sort of as I come in, I, I do just sort of warmly greet everyone, but it's just sort of like the eye contact and the nod yeah. type thing, like it. Yeah as we're going in and most of the people that like work on the ship with you they live on the ship so they're they're here all the time and they know the ship in and out uh they're a good crew and they are loyal uh you've 
worked with them for over a year, at least over a, a few years or something like that too. So, but everyone boards uh, on. Um, what's up? I'm going to say, as we kind of enter in, I'm going to make some time to say hi to everyone who works on the ship. Okay. You, you make yeah. the rounds? That's... I'm going to make the rounds. Good, Good time, yeah. I, would, yeah. I would say as we're coming in, I'm just sort of like, Tamsin, your bunk's still there. Uh, the rest of you got here, 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 mm. wherever you like. Just find a space. And it, it, it's, it's rotational bunk, so it's like... Four people share two bunks. Um, although this ship is not fully uh, crewed, normal full crew is like sixty plus people. Now it's only about like uh, 16, 20. So it's it's a it's a crew to operate it. Um, and is it an inner crew? Oh, it's all belters. It's all belters. Belters. Yeah. Yeah. Through and through. Yeah. They. They. Uh, so you. You know. You, no one's going to take you a few weeks to get out to the Titan, uh, Esther. You might be able to like, sneak an interview or two in there. Yeah, I mean, I am not glad handing in the way that like Cecilia's making big moves. Um, Me. I like Me. find a <laughs> No. <laughs> I I sit in one place kind of on a regular basis and kind of look hopefully and hope people will like share a cup of coffee. This is what I have been trained to do is like sit and wait until like the newness of my earthiness wears off. So, as you guys so have, we didn't actually describe ourselves at all. So no, we didn't. Who, who are we? <laughs> May I ask? Uh, what are we going to start Marv? Uh, oh, uh, Martian, uh, he clearly... Uh, he, there, there's a couple of unique things about, about Marv as you look at him, right? Like, uh, by, by reputation, right, everyone knows that he's a physicist fresh out of, of you know, the, the Martian, you know, military organization. Uh, but he doesn't, like, carry himself with, like, the same, like, like, uh, like rigidity and, and structure. Uh, so, you know, something seems a little bit off there, but uh, he um, is otherwise, uh, looks like he spends a lot of time indoors, uh, but has the hands of a mechanic, even though uh, he, he shouldn't, in theory, be a mechanic. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give Fred a quick piece of information. Fred, you can tell that Marv has the military experience. Not, not like seen action, but served a little bit. Just the way he walks. The way he walks, yeah, he's got that. When he, once he gets on the ship, you see him kind of, his, his posture change a little bit. Um, although, based on my experience dealing with Mars, mm -hmm. that's not necessarily a problem for me, right? I'm, I mean, I noted, but it's not necessarily a potential he's, point of friction, correct? He's not gonna just, get I'm it. like, yeah. He's gonna do right, and he's gonna make sure stuff's good, and he's gonna be disciplined on the ship. He won't get people killed. That's all we need. Yeah. I will say, when I sort of notice his bearing, I just kind of kind of give him the nod, too. <laughs> but don't say anything. All right. Uh, let's hear from uh, Esther. Uh, yeah, so it is very clear that this person is an Earther. Um, she's very young. Um, she is not built remote, like whatever the opposite of um, a belter is, she looks it, right? She, her, her skin has been touched by the sun. She is round, she is short, um, but she's dressed as much as possible as, as a belter without going into cosplay. Um, and wow. right, uh, you went shopping so, at the Belter Mall, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, and, 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 and stuff shows that she's been out here for a while. Um, you'll also periodically see um, various like t shirts and s university swag that all has kind of the go a gold shield with an inner black shield with an open book. Um, with the motto Ko Te Tanagata, which is one of the few surviving universities. This is the University of Waikato or Te Wari Wanago o Waikato, which for us is one of the most progressive universities um, today um, uh, and uh, is kind of still in that kind of way. So um, you'll see bits and pieces of that swag carrying a analog notebook as well as you know technical like digital stuff as well uh I'll, I'll i'm gonna do fred johnson real quick fred fred is an earther about six foot three 
taller for an Earther. And by by far here, by far. So all is of... Fred is B Dave playing Fred or is Fred playing B Dave? <laughs> Correct. Correct. Uh, future me, the future model of me. Yes. Um, but uh, and by far, Esther is the shortest of everyone here. Uh, the 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 derogatory term for Earthers from the Belters is squats, and this is uh, uh, beyond her six feet is is a little off putting for some people. No, um, I mean, not gonna lie, it's how I feel right now. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Why is it down there? But yeah, uh, Fred is a, 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 a of African descent, uh, Earther, a larger person, probably like mid late forties, um, and uh, carries himself in a very uh, forward manner, to say the least. And uh, B Dave, you picked the absolute right shirt to wear for Fred Did Johnson like that? today. Uh, that was that? yeah, that was Chef's kiss. Uh, excellent. <laughs> so, so thank you very much. <laughs> Um, I did do it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, let's go to uh, Cecilia real quick. Ex oh, sorry. If I could, oh, just, I, I know we're doing the introductions, but watching uh, Esther do this, um, if I could just insert, as I see, she's kind of like packed off to the side, mm -hmm. quietly waiting. At some point along the trip, I just kind of stop and I look at her and I say, um, can I offer you a little bit of unsolicited advice? Of course, sir. You're never going to escape what you are. You're never going to be what they are. Don't try. Just be respectful. That's all they want. Respect. Respectfully, sir. That's one of the first lessons I learned when I got out here. But I hope I never forget it. Would you like a cup of coffee? Yes, please. <laughs> Three sugars. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah you, you, you go hand her her, her, her sugar with coffee. Um, all right, uh, Cecilia. Will, you, oh, sorry. I just will say, it just, when, whenever I can sp spend some time with this yeah. young woman, I do, because I, I know how she feels, so. <laughs> Cecilia, let's hear, from, uh, let's hear from you about how you look. So Celia is a uh, belter through and through. Uh, she is very comfortable with a variety of people, uh, belters, humans. Uh, she has oh, this yeah. kind of natural charm, but it feels a little snake-like. So people feel charmed by her, but sometimes also feel slightly alarmed by her <laughs> um, because she is definitely wheeling and dealing. Um, but once again, she's so charming that she gets her way a lot of the time and her network of information of stuff um, certainly is bigger and broader than maybe anyone else except for Fred Johnson uh, on this ship because she's built it hand by hand and if someone wants to get her on their side, they just have to know the right lever to push. So she's the anti-Goldie. She's Bizarro Goldie. <laughs> yeah, we so she's like literally opposite me. She'll do whatever hey. she can. She'll throw you under the bus. Um, but she'll do it in such a charming way that you will be like, oh, maybe I should go under the bus. And you go and you lie <laughs> under the bus and the bus rolls, or sorry, the ship rolls you over. A ship bumps you gently into space uh, and you very willingly do it. So she doesn't really, you know, scream, yell, use that kind of physical force, but she uses the just the right kind of emotional force to really convince everyone that it was their idea to do anything that she wanted them to do, so. Um, and then uh, Tamsin, let's hear about how Tamsin looks. Tamsin is gangly even for a belter. Um, a little bit awkward. Um, generally kind of towards the corner of the room, uh, looking around particularly if there are things with flashing lights um, or gadgets, uh, but also picking up on anything that's on paper nearby, uh, looking for, scanning scanning everything but the people. Mm. Uh, the people too, a little bit, but but much more interest most of the time in, in what's around the people, sort of the artifacts of the place. Um, and uh, she has uh, darker hair braided up, 
uh, a small belter tattoo on her neck um, of it, it looks sort of like a crescent moon with a, a, a triangular top sort of with a little line coming off of it and um, her hands in in op- opposition to Marv's don't look li- like they touch machines a lot but her nails are clipped short and if you ever see her typing her fingers fly faster than anything you've ever seen very good um, you guys have about uh, almost two weeks of time, almost like 13 days to get there. Uh, in that time, you are welcome to do research. Everyone here basically gets an action, what's called an interlude in this game, to do some sort of research, learn some information, uh, plan, whatever you want to do. Uh, so I'm going to go through the, the crew here. And why don't we start with Tamsin, actually? We'll, we'll go in reverse order here. Uh, so uh, what, what would Tamsin want to do uh, prior to getting to Titan? Um, I would want to look into what kind of security systems they have, um, what I might need to get through if we need to get out, but also where I might potentially be able to dig into uh, mm. what they might not be showing off. Okay. Um, roll a, um, I'm going to have you roll a technology check here. So roll the 3d6 and add your technology total there. And you get a re-roll okay. of these two, I believe, um, if you're trying to do it. Uh, so three, five, six, so, uh, 14 plus seven, cool. 21. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not a problem. And uh, should we roll or? I would recommend not re-rolling that. That's really okay. good. <laughs> 21. I mean, if you really want to push your luck, uh, but yeah, no, you're, I'm, you're, good. You're, you're, you're I'm good. good with it. Um, so the location you're going to, um, is the Rania Rise Resort. Uh, this is a, uh, because the, the gravity on Titan's kind of lower, this is a, a giant dome that kind of goes up into a conical shape. Um, it's actually taller than even most of the skyscrapers on Earth. Um, and uh, it is a very fancy place. People that go to Titan tend to be very wealthy. Um, it's, it has these like really fine looking uh, vistas and everything, uh, connectors, you know, deals are made, broken there, stuff like that too. Um, you do know also that your, uh, your liaison there uh, or the liaison who organizes this whole thing, the, the the resort staff basically member. His name is Nikos Kontilis. Um, and, uh, but look at the security of it. Uh, there are cameras uh, as far as like the entrance goes. Um, there is a, uh, a local network. Uh, looking at their style of security and based on what you're gathering, it looks like something you could easily possibly break into different people's like terminals in their, their respective rooms. Um, as far as security goes, they don't have, they have, um, they do have, they don't have, they have armed guards there, but nothing dramatic. But as far as the network security is, I mean, it's, it's an inner run thing. It's kind of a joke. They honestly get away with it just by making it like, you just can't, you can't walk on the surface and no one goes there except they're rich. So that's how they kind of and secure there, themselves. Does there seem to be any place in there that would have, uh, higher level security or that seems like it's a place that's uh being protected differently they they do have a, anything they do have like a network room where they, they they have all their gear and everything like that that is pretty protected but they also do advertise they have conference rooms that are like extra secure and it, it's you're, you're looking at it and you you could go either way on it it could either be that they have extra security or they just slapped a flashy sign that says extra security on it you're not okay. you're not sure um but uh and you I know, know we're booked in. Um, what are we booked in as? Are we booked in as ourselves? Or are we booked in as a? That is an excellent question. You actually have a uh, an alias uh, front company, and I will put that in the chat. And that is your uh, that is in our Zoom chat. You can that is the name of the company you guys are uh, currently operating under. And it, uh, my French sucks. Silencia Courant. Holdings, yeah. And it's like a Luna based holding company. Um, and they just kind of do generic uh, shipping of, uh, of materials and such like that, too. Uh, and your, your cover is that you, know, you could go in as a consultant, like saying we have a pitch, but it's a hell of a pitch to come up with in 10 days. <laughs> um, uh, or you could come in and say, like, we're a consultant. We're just, you know, looking. Uh, there's a lot of different angles here on how to use this company um, in terms of what you guys want to do for your little uh, you know, Ocean's Eleven thing here. 
but that that and you have that's actually part of your your hacking is you managed to organize that this company Dow does exist and has the right channels to be there. But you guys are built out. I built out the website and given us a a search history. Yeah, you 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 backlogged all the social media posts, (laughs) everything. All right, cool. Uh, Cecilia, you're on the ship. Uh, People seem to like you. You're you're having fun with them. Uh, You know you know where their dice game is now. Um, so, uh, what, uh, what would you want to do during these, uh, 12, 13 days of travel? I'm going to attempt to find out at least a small weakness about each of these four companions that I'm on the ship with. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do that through talking to them or do you want to do that through, uh, checking, like asking, like what people have seen on the ship or just observation, or do you actually want to try to like get and like ask questions back home or how do you want to do it? I want to try doing it with talking through them because I believe my persuasion is incredibly high. So I think talking is the way to go. Okay. And I think what I've maybe what I've already done because I could see this is as if there was a way for me to communicate off ship, then I've literally already done that communication at the mm. very beginning of the travel. Oh, yeah. So I would say I would have done two parts. I would have asked my information network back home already and then I would have been talking one-on-one to really, really try to find that weak point in All each right. of them. All right. Um, go, give me a, give me one roll total, and whatever you got on the drama die is the number of people I will. If you succeed on it, the number of people I'll give you information about. So roll. Right. Uh, roll shaking, the, shaking the dice. Please, please. <laughs> For what it's worth, I want to throw out there that I am hard to find any information yeah, about. Yeah, Fringer. Yeah. A few of you got Fringer. Fringer's a dope talent i i don't exist <laughs> okay so i got a uh, six on my little blue die and then i got a three on my drama die okay so your total is what my total is, is that, <laughs> 10. 10 okay plus your plus your bonus here so yeah. um okay 16. so um yeah tamsin doesn't pop up tamsin is, seems to be protected uh especially because you're trying to query series network where you you're pretty sure tamsin's from but like <laughs> Uh, that one's that one's a fault. Fred's actually super easy to find information about. Um, <laughs> as far as what you know, Fred was. You do know that he is the butcher of Anderson Station. He is responsible right. for thousands of, of Belcher deaths, but he redeemed himself a few years ago as negotiating on Palace, this uh, big deal for the unions there, and got them everything they want with no bloodshed. Um, and since then, he, somehow Anderson Dawes has brought him in, um, and he is now OPA like a diehard OPA, although he doesn't come off that way at times. Uh, Marv, uh, you knew Marv is ex uh, Martian Congressional Republic Navy, uh, looks like an engineer. Uh, you do find out that Marv's big accomplishment was optimization of fusion, uh, of the fusion um, uh, cores for, uh, to have them run the engines and the rail guns at the same time, which is very difficult to do, like to up the power levels of them. His work, though, at this point is largely largely theoretical. Esther, um, Esther has kind of gotten herself in over her head, uh, as far as you can tell. Um, this was a this was to be like a, a field research project, and kind of asked the wrong people for help, and is ne- and is now in like you know is now kind of involved with the organized. Uh, union slash crime element of uh, the Belters on series. <laughs> um, yes, it's 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 a very it's a, it's a tale old as time. Uh, but you do know that Esther would have um, elements that would not go over well back at her school being revealed. So you know what? I'm going to say the same thing as. Fred, but for different reasons. So I think Fred was kind to her because he's like, here's just a nice young okay. woman. Um, but I'm going to be nice to Esther because I think that she might grow into having the right connections, mm. but also mm. that if she gets murdered, which I've seen a lot, um, I'm just going to be nice to her till yeah. that time. So. Oh, and you do find that Esther is actually out here on a, on a pretty massive scholarship. Uh, and yes, and I do so love money. So yeah. Cecilia does love money. <laughs> so shocking. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, <laughs> let's go to let's go to Marv. Marv, what do you want to do on the ship here? 
So my uh, like primary form of uh, downtime is going to be uh, spent researching uh, this big project that the Mormons are trying to put together, uh, and then basically putting together what I would believe if I was the project manager behind this, mm -hmm. uh, they would want in terms of capabilities for a ship, for for engine, uh, basically trying me, to uh, know everything about what should be a consideration before we arrive so that way uh, I am prepared. Absolutely. Uh, Mark, give me a research test. You go ahead and you, you, you kind of like query some of the databases, you query some of your friends back on Mars that might have connections to different like shipyards. Let's get that real quick here and see how much information you get. Yeah, that's uh, 13, uh, three on the drama die. Yeah, that includes a plus six. Uh, uh, oh, oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's 13 before okay. the plus six. Right. You're right. Uh, 19. Uh, the uh, So the Latter-day Saints are requesting the following. Get to Tal Ceti, where there's supposedly, like, a, there, there, there is believed a planet that can support life there. It's comparable to Earth. It's 12 years, light years away. Their main criteria isn't so much is getting there, but also bringing 5,000 plus. 5,000 is the minimum number of people. So they're bringing like a lot of people. I mean, your biggest Martian ship has maybe a few hundred people on it. Mm. So this is like not a small undertaking what they're asking. In addition, there's also some language in their uh, request that they have, um, how do I put this? Their, their lifestyles and religious beliefs honored in the, the construction of the ship. So they want like decor. They want they want like churches built into the ship. They want stuff like that to to, to ensure their um, their religious practice can continue on out to Tal Ceti. Sure, sure. I, I don't give a rat's ass about any of that. I'm looking for the technical specs. Okay, <laughs> Mo moving moving five thousand people and keeping them alive for years upon years, potentially even a, like up to a hundred years. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there's a lot of talk of generational ships, and there's a. Uh, that's the main one that most people are pitching. The other one too is there's some other there's some other modifications there of in. Okay. Uh, I, I, you yeah. got you got pretty good. I'll give you one. Uh, one other idea is cryogenics. That's popped up. Okay. Or right. an idea of mine or an idea no, that of, they're one, interested. One of, there's, in. Those are the major thoughts on how to get that far out. Okay. Uh, All right. Generational ship or or, or uh, cryogenics. Yeah. 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 Because uh, what what since light speed travel isn't a thing, how m many years d do we expect this journey to take? At a point, so I actually did, I have my calculator ready, buddy. Uh, at point one G, acceleration with a D cell on the way there, it would take about 21 years. But that's with a okay. cut, but the problem is that no ship can carry that much fuel. So right, you're talking right. 100 years probably. And you also, at that point, would start approaching the speed of light. So if you, even if you had that much fuel, so you've got bigger okay. problems. All right. All right. Good to know. Uh, yeah. So I'll just be running some of those calculations, trying to basically put together what I think they should be looking for. Um, and, and then any any spare time uh, will uh, either be spent uh, checking out the ship's engines here on this ship. Uh, you, I'll, I'll probably you at do some notice point. One thing. You do notice one thing with the ship that's unique. Um, most of the time when you have when you have cargo containers outside the ship, the release containers just kind of there's clamps they release, right? Uh, this one has numerous explosive bolts set to those. So it can shoot them off if it needs to. Like wrap like at a high speed. That's not that's what you'd usually see like on safety, like high-end safety machinery, like on like ships. This is way over uh, specification. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Good to know. Right. Um, uh, and yeah, that, that's it for, for me in terms of projects. At some point, I think I would uh, probably go sit down and talk with uh, Esther, uh, mm -hmm. since she said something about being in, in higher ed, and uh, that that's an area that I am unfortunately experienced in. Uh, <laughs> but, right, you well, know. Let me get let me get Esther's then interlude. Uh, what do you want to do on this, Esther? Do you want to, uh, what the hell's going to do? Well, I've been taking advantage of the fact that everyone wants to talk to me like I am 10 instead of 22. It's like everybody wants to take your survey. Uh, hey. Please um, take her survey. Please yeah, go I, online and take her survey. It's live now. Please, thank you. Um, uh, no, uh, I have been taking that advantage to kind of ensure that as many on ship uh, I have some kind of interview process with and 
kind of doing that wide-eyed, I'm listening, open-ended question interview protocol with the unauthorized addition of questions that are designed to also try to see what people on board understand in terms of what we're doing, figuring out motivations, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't miss some of that. I was trying to, I was trying to find your uh, survey. To no, share no, the it's okay. Uh, we, uh, it's in Josh, chat. Josh we got has got us covered okay. in chat. Bless him. And Goldie had it in our in our Zoom. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm I'm basically doing my normal sur- like mm. interview protocol with okay. the addition of trying to figure out what the hell's I'm I'm heading towards. Okay. Um, and what are the in this kind I of like this. The, the 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 academic naive version of what uh, Cecilia has been trying to do back end. Give me an investigation check. And I get a plus one bonus on all investigation checks that involve interviewing others. Hey, <laughs> oh, but that doesn't save you from a shitty ass dice roll. So let's see. That is investigation. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, I mean, you sort of... The belters aren't terribly, like, responsive to you because they're busy doing the ship and keeping everyone alive. Fair. Um, but you, the the people that you kind of met earlier are a little, little warmer to you. Um, but as far as what you're getting into, you do kind of find out that this is the kind of... They, they view it as a negotiation. That you're going into a negotiation. Uh, and Fred is the head negotiator here. That that's their take on it, and they're here. They're listening to Fred because they respect him. Um, and it's unclear if they respect him either because of he's negotiated things in the past or because um, Anakin Dawes told them to respect him. You can't. You can't. Um, it's or there's, there's a third reason. <laughs> there is a third reason too, because <laughs> airlocks are a thing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, and, that's it. And from talking to, to Fred, do I have a better understanding of his angle on any of this? Does she, Fred? Uh, I wouldn't really try and hide it. It's, I'm, I'm just trying to help the Belters. I realize it, it, it's a it's a multi-headed hydra of everybody wanting something for them, but I actually want something for these people. Yep. So yeah, you, you, there's, a, there's an element of redemption, but there's also an element of duty. Uh, you can tell he has several conflicting and, but they all, not conflicting, but different motivations, but they all kind of streamline, he's managed to somehow streamline them all into this action. Uh, gotcha. That's why I listed him as an advocate. <laughs> so, uh, um, I couldn't think of a better way to, I, I wasn't going to put Flitcher. I felt that was kind of uh, predicated. So, uh, Colonel Johnson, what do you want to do on this trip? You got, you got a few days. I would say there's two main things that I'm interested in. It's not so much these people that are on board. I, I know half of them, the other half of them, if does, um, is vouching for them. That's enough, at least for now. The two things I want to try and figure out is who I'm going to be dealing with in these mm. negotiations and why here. Uh, why, why, why are we at this place of all places? That's not a coincidence. So, so Titan's the kind of place you take people to like wine and dine. And what it is is that it's this kind of like the the various groups, these various organizations, the engineering firms have basically paid for what looks to uh, looks to be a total, uh, at least three major uh, members of the LDS Church to come out there um, to hear their pitches. Uh, it is if you want to know the names of them, it's High Priest uh, Montero. Elder Birch and Elder McCann. Um, and I can put the uh, link to all that. I think it, it should be. Um... I got it. I'll throw it in chat. Got it. Um, yeah. Uh, so, and um, yeah, they're, uh, they're kind of, you know, some are outreach, like how can they market this? Some are like the engineering, kind of like the science official of it. And the other one's just a leader of the church, the, the kind of spiritual leader. Um, as far as other people going, you have uh, companies, uh, Pope Enterprises. Uh, Sebastian Pope is, runs that one. Um, he runs a major shipping company called Pope Sanchez uh, Shipping. And the other guy just moves stuff around. He's good at logistics, uh, but he also does some high, high science uh, stuff. The other organizations are Mal Kwiatkowski. Uh, uh, Mal Kwiatkowski is like a huge company. They do everything. They have their fingers and everything. Um, but what's interesting about them is actually their presence there doesn't seem to be very big. Everyone else brought like their full team. Mal seemed to brought one person. 
Um, so something's, something's throwing you off there. Uh, the Tyco Corporation um, is there as well, uh, led by the owner, uh, the, who's the grandson of the founder, uh, whose name is Brendan Tyco. And then the last company out there that's, uh, oh, sorry, uh, one more company out there is Butenko Engineering. Um, and they are run by uh, Oksana Butenko. Um, and they've come out there with a few people as well. The last company is, and I need to put this one on the list, is um, it's actually kind of a, a hodgepodge. It's two companies that are trying to work together. Um, it's uh, Prosopina, I think I said that right, Pro Prosopina Starworks, along with World Charter Energy. Um, they're trying to bring both their different sciences together to make this work. So, and we're representing a fake company that is a front, but everybody's yeah. going to know me. So there's going to be a little bit of a disconnect there, I think, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an issue. So one of the things that might occur here is you could you could certainly send just an away team. You could just send the shuttle down and they go down and do the, do the business. And you can kind nah, of- we're not uh, doing that. What's that? <laughs> nah, we're not doing that. Okay. Or you, um, and, or you could just kind of like, uh, you know, run offs from the from the, the hotel room or whatever it is. Or, uh, but you, but you, if you made a sh if you made a show there, people would certainly uh, be interested. I mean, and your presence, you would draw you would draw attention. I mean, there's there's always that. If you you make a hell of a distraction, I mean, you are a celebrity basically. This, so, I think I know how to play that. Um, just like real life. No, <laughs> job. You're still hyping me, just like real life. Um, <laughs> I, I would I would say somewhere um, somewhere along the way uh, in this trip I would kind of get us all together and yeah. I would say um, everybody settled in. Uh, hopefully the accommodations are to your liking. Sure. I'm saying this to you guys. Sure. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, no complaints. As I'm uh, running this through in my head, um, I see one place is our primary point of vulnerability. We have these luminaries, these mega corporations, some large and some small, but I don't know uh, how tightly our cover is going to hold up under scrutiny. And I look at Tamsin and I say, um, I assume you've uh, given us at least a few years worth of a backstory for anybody that starts digging. Yes, absolutely. It'll it'll go back as, you know, looks like we started about 12 years ago. Uh, plenty of cross-referencing companies we've worked with. We worked that out all uh, with, with Mr. Dawes. Uh, Worst case, anybody pushes too hard, um, we represent some people that don't necessarily want to be in the spotlight. I think that's a, a simple enough explanation. When we start the negotiations, uh, who all wants to be in the room? Or do you all want me to just go while you do something else? I would like to say I would like to be in the room at least a little bit. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm no Fred Johnson. Uh, for sure, but I would love to jump in and, and help out where I can. Uh, I think I might know some people. I would say I, I would disclose the same list to Cecilia and everybody else that you just gave me of who I expect to be there. That's yeah. not a secret, so I'm like, this this is who I think will be there. <laughs> oh. And do I? I, I, do oh. I sorry. Oh, Tam, no. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I was going to say, do I actually know any of these people? Uh, no, you know none of these people that are going to be at this thing. Um, they're okay. all mostly Earthers. Uh, there's a, maybe a one or two Martians on the teams, but it's okay. pretty much all Earth corporations, um, not a, a contingent you really have a lot of opportunity to interact with. Um, but if you, you know, uh, you do get enough information about some of them that you could uh, leverage a little bit. One of them is really interesting to you, Cecilia. Actually, when you look at the dossier of the names that are there, they're checked in. Um, the uh, Botanko Engineering, Oksana, the owner, has actually brought her son with her, um, which is weird. No, oh. there's not any kids there. And he's yeah. some, uh, he's like, it looks like he's like uh, 15 years old. His name's uh, Yakiv. Got it. 
So there's kind of, right. that one's kind of a, that's kind of a weird one. Um, the other one that's kind of weird is the Mal Quick, uh, Mal Kwiatkowski uh, organization. They brought one person. This is a major corporation. It's a very rich organization. You know the name. You, you've you've seen the the tabloids about his kids and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and they sent one person. Like they're either really confident or like something's wrong. I don't want to be in the room. Cecilia knows better, uh, and so she does, definitely doesn't want to be in the room for that one. But she definitely wants to be in the room for the Tanko Engineering. And she's, you know what? She's strategic, so she's gonna maybe ask that Marvin also be there. Okay. I would say uh, yes. I, I, I was going to um, to suggest that maybe I could be in your ear. Sasaka. Excellent. Yeah. I think that's probably uh, probably best because I'm sure we're going to have lots of people running all kinds of digital interference. Keeping an eye. Dr. Marvin. Yeah. Um, of the players here, who do you think is most likely to be able to actually get it done? And I point out Prospina, Starworks, and Worldshar are working together. I'm like, that sort of jumped off the page at me, but uh, you're the expert here. Um, if you want me to give you information about each of them, Pope is mostly logistics, uh, moving sure. stuff around. If they're working on something, it's secret. Like you don't, you don't even know what they're working on. Uh, sure, Mal Quick sure. makes everything. They would be an all all inclusive solution. Uh, Tyco, you know, would pull it off. It's just the represent. Rep you, you had a you know you had a Tyco poster on your wall as a kid, you know, type thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but Tanko does a pretty pretty damn good engines they their attitude would probably be to try to get them there fast um as far as this one that's that's this joint organization it's like you know from the past even being martian and working with other teams it can get kind of contentious because teams have different workflows and uh i don't know that one seems risky but uh you do know that one of the companies is does really good and like they do like racing ships type, type of things and the other one does mostly like um like uh, processing of materials and such like that. So it could work out. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll share all that general, you know, information, uh, perhaps with, you know, the anecdote about uh, the, the two uh, science teams from back a long time ago where, you know, they built half the, the spaceship with uh, the metric system and half the spaceship <laughs> yeah, with yeah. that outdated imperial system that nobody uses anymore. Uh, there should be, you know, could be some, some like communication breakdowns or uh, some nature, I suppose. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I'll share all that. Um, uh, frankly, I, I think, uh, I think anybody can build a ship. I would be most concerned about Butanko in terms of technological advancements. Duly noted. And um I'm curious about what Pope has cooking. Uh that that uh just uh, Jen Jen to John, I would like that's who I'm curious. I want to see those secrets. Um mm. that one would be one of those things you need to be on the ground to do. You can't be on a ship. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. I, I what okay, I what okay. I'm expecting is that we're going to go to the hotel and I will be in Cecilia's ear from a hotel room. I, I will say because this. I can tap the network from the hotel room. You said, Correct. yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will say this when you when you start looking at information about this whole meet and, this whole meet and greet thing they're doing. Uh, this was Pope's idea, and he frequents Titan quite a bit. He's known as a I don't say playboy, but he likes to go out there and and he likes, to, he likes to do his deals there. He likes to talk to people face to face there. So it's kind of his home, uh, his home place, if you will. Okay. I would say to to the young scholar Esther. Yes, sir. Uh, I just sort of motion to this, and I say, uh, "So these are the pieces on the board. Anything jump out at you?" Um, would I have any sense, uh, John, mm -hmm. of kind of uh, the like n popping up in kind of these names in terms of popping up in terms of historical reputation and these sorts of things in terms of my interview subjects and that sort of deal. 
Uh, Tycho's favored by, amongst Belters for sure. Uh, Pope is kind of neutral. Uh, Malquick is just kind of everywhere. No matter what you do, you have a Malquick. I mean, one of your uh, the pants you're wearing are a Malquick made. I mean, it's that kind of situation. Um, Butenko's the one that kind of throws you off. That like they brought their kid. Like that's a, it's such a far place to bring like your fourteen. I mean, we, look, I, I know if you've ever tried done a car trip with a fourteen year old. Um, this is a, make it last three months would be rough. So the, they brought their kid this far out there. That one though, I'm actually going to, I'm going to give you the, um, I'm going to give you the anthropology test on that one. Okay. Figure that out one out. That one's kind of weird. It's like, okay. it stands out. It just stands out, but give me the anthropology test. Okay. Oh, that's better this time. Uh, that would be, uh, 18. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Um, you're pretty sure that there's an idea of like portraying the company as a family company that the LDS might work. Like that's what, they're, they're, that's what their, whole, their hope is. They're trying to like market themselves because the company is owned by, by um, a couple. Uh, Osa Oksana is like the main leader. And, um, but yeah, they're the only ones that brought a kid and it's kind of like, you know, why you do that? But they're, maybe they have that angle, um, knowing that that's a, that's a high value of, of these, this potential client. Yeah, it's the, they're clearly doing something interesting with optics. Yeah. Mm. Titan's not the place to bring your kids for vacation, I'll put it that way. Uh, Dr. Esther, um, one other thing. Yes, um, sir. Hmm, let me put this kindly. Um, we've manufactured a company out of nowhere. Uh, is this child, Yakib, does he show up in the records all the way back? I mean, do they have a son? <laughs> Uh, you, you query it real quick. I mean, not a problem. It takes a little, takes, with light delay and everything comes out. He has a social media presence. Uh, he seems to really like um, uh, gardening. He's not an engineer. He's not playing with blocks. He's not doing stuff. He's really into like, it shows him like growing squashes with thumbs up. I mean, it's it's like this kid's like part of like FFA and 4-H and all that kind of stuff. He's um, definitely... Uh, no pun intended, the, the apple has fallen a bit away from the tree of, of a family so of engineers. They're not only dragging a 15 year old halfway across the back of beyond, but a 4 H kid. Yes, into they, space. They, they, they dragged a child that's going to be bored on a three gotcha. month road trip for gotcha. business. That's it's. I'm already desperate, thinking desperate. about ways to basically give him a Game Boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But a bugged Game Boy. <laughs> I love and it. I and Cecilia will because she wants to get a little closer to Yaki for various reasons. She will absolutely help uh, anyone plant bugs as long as they give her information in exchange. I think there are a lot of opportunities here. Plant, plant, plant. <laughs> All right. Awesome. When, when, we, when we land, um, I may have to step away from you all uh, for a, a small time to take care of a couple of things behind the scenes, but you'll have plenty of chances to get ready. Right. Um, the trip goes on uneventful. Straight, it's a straight shot out to Titan, no problem. You guys get in orbit. Uh, there is a shuttle provided that comes up. It does a, a, a dock. You get on the shuttle, you head down uh, to Titan. The gravity down there is pretty mild. It's pretty easy to deal with. Um, it's not much more, it's not much different than the series. Um, but uh, we're going to take a break here and come back with uh, more uh, Adapa's fate as we kind of unleash our plan upon this unsuspecting child, apparently. It's uh, going to be fine. <laughs> no one told me this was going to be I, I child-related espionage. You focused on so hard. I'm it's, like, all right. I, I, like, I just, I just want to know what's the legal drinking age in space. That's all I want to know. You know what I mean? I'm all like, is, is this like space I mean, space we're, we're pitching to yeah. LDS, so so not non-existent, yeah, right? I, I, actually, that was one detail I should have mentioned. It's, it's supposedly a dry event, so I will say that. Oh so dear that, God! I was like everybody around the LDS, though. Yeah. However, you know, however, I'm gonna make. I, I'm going to recommend uh, someone take a flask because it sounds like Pope likes to have a good time. I will take that flask. Okay, you got that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you In fact, put I have. In an, the flask? I have. I have secret flask too. I have booze for everyone. Exactly. <laughs> 
All right, um, we're gonna take about a 20 minute break. Uh, we will be back with more of this. Um, and we thank you everyone for beating our goal. We're at 850 bucks. Uh, oh, that's eight, amazing. Eight for 500. Thank you all so much. Um, they, they've stacked a lot of rerolls, but no one's had a reroll yet. Uh, and uh, if you guys need to get more fortune, you can get more fortune. But uh, thank you everybody for, uh, for this. We'll be back in about 20 minutes with more Adapa's fate. I gotta don't go back. nowhere. Don't, don't miss it. Don't miss it. All right, the away team here. Uh, Fred Johnson takes a takes a breather. Uh, he's going to kind of separate himself enough from you guys so he, the whole team does get recognized and everybody's asking, you know, why are you with Fred Johnson? Um, being the celebrity. But you get down on the resort. Um, as you come in, you can see on the view screen, so that this thing is magnificent. It is an absolute 100% feat of engineering. It looks like a, it's like a crystal tower coming right, I mean, almost like a fantasy novel, coming right out of the ground of this like alien landscape of like, weird pools of like weird bubbling liquid with like, with like a yellow like uh horizon and ground and all this stuff like that too supposedly a lot of sulfur out there um but this thing's completely protected so no you, you perks of a back suit um, <laughs> um but as you uh as you kind of come on they, they really give the whole like you know it, it, it's an approach that's meant to show off the resorts and you do see the other resorts in the distance as well all these various domes and stuff too uh, Marv, it does make you think a little bit of Mars, but much more, um, less um, utilitarian, more uh, show-offy, we'll say. Um, but yeah, yeah you guys, sure. And, and they even have a full-blown dry dock. Uh, you don't have to umbilical in, you just, like, you go into a hangar, the hangar seals up, they repressurize it. I mean, this is, like, high-end stuff. Um... You come on, you come on out, and uh, as you do, you uh, you are in this hangar bay, and it's pretty nice, and it has like big screens and stuff showing off. There's some practical elements of it too, but the part that faces outwards is very uh, made up. And you see as you come off a, uh, uh, it's a, he's an Earther, but he's he's a little slender. Probably spent a lot of time in the low gravity, um, all things considered. Probably um, had a little bit of uh, we'll say a little bit of work done. Um, to keep his youth up and uh, definitely taking some of the anti-aging drugs that are available. But uh, you see a, a slender kind of uh, man in a classical, like, um, uh, not, 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 it's like he's got like a blazer on with like a white shirt, very well pressed and everything like that too, very fashionable, hair is well done. He's, uh, and he says, uh, greetings, welcome to Renea Rise Resort. As he kind of welcomes you off onto the, the ground. Well, shit, thanks. <laughs> Excellent, wow. excellent, excellent. Um, hi, I, I am Nikos. Uh, I will be the one that uh, overseeing the event uh, this time. Uh, you are with uh, Silisu. Is it Silisu? How do I how do I say that? Um, how, how did what's uh, that's close Silisu enough. Coron. The Lou Coron. Oh, oh yeah, right. Yeah, the Lou Coron. He's like, oh, okay, excellent. Silencio um, Coron. Silencio Coron. Excellent. Silencio Coron. Well, um, your fleet awaits. Uh, we have that ready for you. Uh, we have you on the schedule to meet with uh, our your client here at the conference room uh, C. That's our nicest one, I might add. Uh, we actually have a real wood table in there. Um, oh. Right? Oh, surely a, a, a woman of fine taste. And he's looking at your kind of like wraps and everything like that too. And, you might have had time to freshen them up or send them to the recycler or something like that. You guys, and you guys, I hope that you guys cleaned up a little bit over the uh, two week journey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, and you guys have been providing nicer clothing. I will say that for this for this thing. And he um, he's okay. Well, let me go and escort you up to your suite. And uh, if there's anything you need, uh, please. He flashes over his details to your guys' um, data pads, and all kind of synced with the system here. Um, and you guys see the big, you know, the big logo of the, you know, uh, Renee Rise Resort. I mean, it's super fancy over the top. Um, apparently, it's named after like some sort of islands that used to be on Earth that are now underwater. That used to be a gorgeous resort. But um, yeah, he, um, uh, he he's ready to escort you, and uh, you have his contact information to talk to or anything. So I'm going to shake his hand, and mm -hmm. I'm going oh. to say thank you, Nico. Oh, excellent. And who? And and, and you are, and he looks at those things. Uh, did you, did you did you give your real name or do you give a fake name? Uh, I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give a real first name, okay. <laughs> and then it'll be a made up last name. Okay. Yeah. 
I think, I think we would have worked this out as yeah. we built the, no. the track record. I was going to go with yeah. everyone's standard first name, but we'll, the last name we might keep going mysterious. Yeah. Although, the Valentine, you might need to keep your credentials ready. Yeah, um, no, I, I, I expect I'll be going by my real name. I don't do uh, subterfuge ver very well, so, uh, I, yeah, De Valentine it is. Uh, how's it going, Nico? We're on a secret mission. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he goes, okay, he's a very well, he's like, oh, he's like, he, he kind of, he greets you and he shakes your hand in a very kind way, like an overtly etiquette way. Um, it's it's interesting, and he recognizes you as a belter, but he's, uh, you don't get this kind of respect from like random earthers too often. Um, but he's definitely in the service. He is in the service industry. Emphasis on both words. Um, but yeah, he, do you guys want to go up to the room or do you guys want to stop and check something out or? Um... Uh, what, is there an agenda in the in the data pad we got? Yeah, there, you get the details over. And you, the only thing that's an agenda in there is there is like a mixer. Um, and then uh, tonight there's a mixer. Then tomorrow is your like meeting with the the LDS church uh, members, your, your pitch, basically. Where's the mixer? Uh, the mixer's actually at this, like, kind of, um, I don't know, I, ballroom would be a way to put it. Um, it is clearly labeled that it, it's a ballroom. There will be some music. There will be refreshments. Um, and it is clear off the bat that it is not, um, there's no uh, alcohol to be served there either, though. But uh, there is a bar on premise, so I will say that. Though. It's all mixers, no alcohol. It's all mixers. Uh, that's a good one. Um, that's a good can one. we, uh, can we, in anticipation, go drop bugs in the rooms that we think might be relevant? Scout um, out the space. You do have access to the hallways out there. Uh, they may not. They may or may not be open. Um, but that ballroom, uh, you could ask Nico if you could view it uh, ahead of time. I think that's a great idea. Uh, I, I was actually thinking we should ask for a little bit of a scenic tour. Oh. Uh, perhaps mm. we could oh. also uh, just see all of our locations. I tend to do this for like academic events. I like to see which rooms I'm going to be speaking in uh, before, like the day before oh. I speak, so I know how you, to get there. Uh, Dr. Devalin, I, I didn't realize that kind of doctor. Oh, excellent. Yeah, no, I'd be more happy to uh, take you all around and give you a quick tour. Um, so we kind of escort you through some hallways initially from the 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 docks are well off in the main resort, uh, just for security and you know, not dying. Um, and uh, you uh, you come into the, the dome. This thing is massive. Um, in it, you see a pool. You see like uh, like a bar. You see like a you know, kind of like a I don't, I don't say I don't go so far as a tiki bar, but you see a kind of a poolside bar. You see like they have um, like open tennis courts not like racquetball courts where they'd be in, inside of a room. It's like open ceiling. The, the ceiling goes way up and you can see how it's like set to reflect the light in such a way, um, the refractions and everything of the atmosphere. And he says, yes, we have an excellent, um, and he looks to Esther, he says, uh, you're aware of the, the Northern Lights on, on Earth, the Aurora Borealis? Yes. We have a similar effect here, although it's a little different tone of colors, but uh, it is quite viewable uh, at it. And we, um, if you want to get a schedule, we have them uh, plotted out so you can be able to view it during your stay here. Oh, how interesting. Thank you. Might I, might I recommend a, a swim under the Borealis of Titan? Oh. Um, and uh, Cecilia, you, you recognize a man who's selling the play. <laughs> the man is selling it. Um, so and if I if I have the sense that the rest of the team is trying to like f plant or think about stuff, I am going to like do my very best active listening. Like, please tell me more. Okay. Um, I'm really curious. What do you mean that the colors are slightly different? Excuse me. Um, well, you see, we have a different atmospheric composition, and he starts going into the science of it. He starts talking about how like the molecules break apart. In different ways, and on Earth, it's it's a different, you know, it's like nitrogen and oxygen. And, all and then I think things. maybe Cecilia will nudge Tamsin, and just be like, do that little backhand, like hand me a bug, because I'm going to help you Snuck more efficiently oh, plant. Go. Yeah, oh, so I'm go. gonna help plant. He does have pockets. I, I will yeah, also let's, let's drop one for sure. Uh, just make it known that uh, I have a small drone. Uh, thanks to chat. Thank you, chat, for donating and giving uh, us a, an item. Marvin found a drones. small drone. We love it. Wow. So we I have a small drones. drone uh, that, that could be used. Oh, just real quick. The, uh, the, the, drone, the drone, when you load it up into your data pad and sync it, it does have a name. It's Trinket. 
Oh, perfect. Uh, Sorry, I had, to, I had to do it for her. That, 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 the name is of my fuzzy? new puppy. Yeah, is sorry. it the fuzziest fluffy. drone ever? Uh, uh, it has fuzzy logic. Does it have little filaments all over it? It Maybe. does have a sensor package. Okay. <laughs> it's disguised as a puppy, so it runs around and everyone wants to talk to and pet it, and that that's how it draws attention and gets information. Okay, well, I'm gonna my, quickly, that's my version gonna, of spy tech. <laughs> I'm going to take one of the the, um, the bugs. One of the bugs that yeah. I've been handed. I'm going to just really because Celia is so helpful. She's going to help smooth out, you know, some lint that was on Nico's oh, jacket. He's like, you like that, huh? Well, we have a, then, we have a tailor on premise that you'd be interested. In. And he's kind of like he's kind of looking over his outfit. Right. Give and me, she's going to drop that. This is a dexterity test. Pocket. Yes. Uh, so May I help with that in any way? Uh, I would like, if you want to make a distraction, uh, Tamsin, you are welcome to make a distraction. Okay. And yes, am please. I, am I also making the distraction, or is that just like part of? I'm, I'm going to have Tam. I, I think I think okay. the, the, the I got doubles. The belt just kind of signal to each other. They're doing this on their cool. own. Um, I got eleven, and I got doubles. What double? What was the drama die number? Uh, drama die number one. Number one. Okay, so you got one point. So you actually like um, you do manage to like um, and, and you're you have a, let me see if you have this right here. You have a plus. I'm looking at the wrong character sheet. It's, it's just for sheet. Um, okay, you get a plus two to this, so you got a thirteen on it total. Um, you're not doing the best at it. Let's see if Tamsin can distract. Tamsin, how do you want to distract uh, this man? Um, let's see. What am I good at here? Uh. Let's talk about, I'd like to ask about, um, you know, he's telling us about the, the pool and all of the, the simulated Northern Lights goodies that they do and all oh, of that. it's not simulated, like, it's real. I, I'm sorry, it's not simulated, sorry. Uh, you get, you get, you, so you ask him, is it simulated? And he's like, oh no. <laughs> sure, <laughs> I'll, I'll start trying to uh, to, to dig in okay. on sort of a, the layout of the place and, and the, the, pro, the features, give me a, uh, all of the features that, He's, I understand, if there's one thing I understand, it's ambition. Yeah. And this seems like a person who uh, has, a, a, has a bit of that. I'm gonna have you give me a communications test real quick. So uh, roll a 3d6 and add two to it and you're good to go. Oh, I got doubles as well. Um, hey. So four, four, five. Oh, wow. Right. And the, the five is the is the chaos die. Excellent, yeah. So and you, then I reroll all or? No, you're good. You, you made it on that one, actually. You're good. Okay. Uh, that's a really good cool. roll. Um, so, so um, you can tell that Cecilia's not like the best this like sleight of hand thing, but um, you start engaging in conversation with uh, Nico, and he's like, "Oh, he's like, yes, please." And as he does, like he raises his arm up, and uh, Cecilia, you drop a small little, like tiny little bug into his into his pocket of his uh, sports coat that he's very proud of too. Um, and he goes, he sees you kind of, as you pull your hand, he's like, I know, right? They're, it's absolutely gorgeous. Like we, we have them on sale here. Uh, our, ta our tailor would be more than happy to take care of any of our customers uh, as they see fit. Um, what else? Uh, and where it? do you source your, your threaded needles from? You know, there are, there are. Oh, uh, um, uh, well, we uh, tend to use a little more uh, machinery, a little more hands-on, um, mm, but we mm. have a quick turnaround. Um, but our, mm. our materials though, are, uh, we do have materials that are, we recycle here. Uh, so if you're if you're for the more uh, economically minded person, but we do have elements too. We have imported for obviously uh, premium prices. Fantastic, fantastic. Good to know. I, I'd be curious about your suppliers. You know, we're always looking to hmm. find out who hmm. who people are working with, see if there might be opportunities for our our company to. Uh, Oh, to be of service. Excellent. Well, the uh, from my understanding, the others here are very eager to talk to uh, the members of the LDS Church. Uh, they all seem very excited, and it's a very exciting time. It sounds like a very exciting project, um, and we're so happy to host and bring these people together from across the solar system. So uh, fantastic, and we love that. Um, I have to say, I, I love that such a diverse group has come uh, to help. So fantastic. They'll love that. Oh, thank you, Ratna. What, what else? Um, what else can I show you about the resort? Uh, so we, we we'd love to see the ballroom and and mm. some of the mm. conference rooms. Mm. Just get a sense of the place. I mean, you did say that the conference room had a real wood table. <laughs> it is quite the pride. Um, unfortunately, our conference rooms we I, um we don't tend to show them off. Uh, I can show you the video of them. We have a holographic as well, but we tend not to let people in there until the time is ready. Um, but um, I just want to see where question. it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, not a problem. It's um, 
So he, he kind of starts walking off and thing, and he shows you this off area that's it's kind of built off of the dome. It's kind of like a office building on the side of the dome. Probably has like their you know laundry and all that kind of stuff there. And the rooms are, the rooms are all underground. Um, there are some that are above ground, like with like optimal like views, but those are pretty high end. You guys are in a suite, which isn't as quite high end. Um, but yeah, he um, uh, he shows you. He's like, oh yes, if you go through here and you take this way, the the ballroom is there, and then our conference room is further down. Um, for good privacy, but it's an easy line back and forth. Um, and as you can see, our kitchen is here, and we are ready to serve uh, whatever you may be interested in. Is there any openings around the door for something small to slip through? Um, as you see the door, it is a it's a set of metal doors. Um, it looks like it's set up to be sealed and be like soundproof as well. Uh, he oh. does they do value privacy here. Um, is it a tech? Is it a tech closure? Is it like a key card it, it, or? It has like a, a, a pad and everything like that too. Um, it looks like it's synced to probably like a room key or something to that effect. Okay. Um, can I do a quick kind of flyby duplicating the code of it? Um, not to that degree, but you could certainly memorize the model number and figure out like the kind of default codes to get to get into it later. Okay, uh, sure. It, it wouldn't be terribly conspicuous for you to start tapping on the thing. So, but um, yeah, you can. You definitely know as soon as you see it, you kind of memorize the model numbers and everything on it, and you you would certainly be able to look up the specs for it, no problem. And I think Perfect. Cecilia is going to ask one last question, and that's where does everyone socially congregate mm, well, in this? Um, the um, well, uh, the the church members have have largely been in their uh, well, one of our grandiose suites that actually has its own small dome. Um, and you, and you, you saw some of these on the way out there. Kind of, like, they kind of like uh, pepper the area a little bit. There's a few of them. There's like maybe three or four of them for the resort. Um, they have largely been in there uh, discussing. They do come out for dinner and stuff like that too, and uh, have been social at points. Um, but uh, some people do use the the bar on the far side as well. That's been a that's been a common area. The pool side is excellent. Um, and whenever we have the lights going, the lights are going on the outside and the, the aurora occurs, uh, the dome is quite social, to say the least. And is the the the, the uh, aurora on a kind of day-night cycle, or is it more common than that? Um, it is a... Um, eh, it, we, we kind of plot it out to some degree. Some nights are bigger than others, obviously. Um, but I believe we have one, let me check here. Yeah, there's a smaller one tonight. Some people will be out for that. So please, um, if you're interested, we'd love to have you out for that. Thank you. All right. And you, and you guys see like these like methane clouds moving through it. I mean, it's, and, and they're like multicolored. It's almost like a, a cloudy rainbow uh, for those of you that know what a rainbow is, um, a one of you. <laughs> and, um, We've all seen water spray with a light through it. Right. That's true. Yeah, you have seen that. Yeah, but not this brandy. Not not to that extent. No, no yeah. that would be not in the sky. Yeah, uh, let alone the sky. And that, that's that's actually that's a legend. That's a legend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's actually, that that's actually one of the things uh, for the Marv. You're you've been okay with the, the two builders. It's a little weird having this much ceiling. Like it, it going above twenty feet is like a little disorienting at points. But um, a little vertigo from it. But you you adapt to it uh, and see your way through it. Okay, but yeah, he eventually uh, escorts you to your room, uh, your suite, um, and it's set up where it ha it's basically like four bedrooms off of a single uh, chamber. Um, it has like a place to call room service, it has a terminal, uh, it has like, you know, uh, a view screen that you can pull up different things. You can always, um, you, they have different cameras located outside the, the venue that you can watch um, the outside and like set up kind of a, you know, mock environment with like, you know, nice calming sounds and, um, their menu shows that they have like a geothermal powered spa. I mean, it's it's like Thank it's, you. It's, a, it's a resort on Titan. OK, <laughs> that no expense was spared. <laughs> I look forward to checking out the spa later. Let's put it that way. I'm curious when people gather around the pool. Now, who brought their swimsuits with them? Um, and there actually is a um, there actually is a fabricator in the room that will fabricate clothing. So if you need to fabricate like towels or um, swimsuits, they have those on the go. They are kind of, and, and for a premium price, you can have the fabricator customize the color and design on it or whatever you want to do. But it, otherwise, it's going to come out with the resort's logo on it. 
repeating pattern all over. Yeah. But so are still, we oh. are we at this point like in our room? Yeah, you're in your room. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And he showed you all the stuff in the room, all the kind of cool stuff. And you guys each have your own private chambers, uh, your own private bedrooms. Um, and it's and like the bedrooms are about as big as like most the dwellings on Tyrion's people's homes. Oh. It is and opulent. How, and what relative time it, is it relative to um, the mixer? They're, yeah, they're doing their daytime. Um, the mixer is supposed to happen in about like three hours. Okay. So you guys are a little, you guys have a little bit of time to spare. You know, I want to take Tamsin aside, maybe uh, have like a little conversation while we're during this like a lull. Yeah. 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 So I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna knock on Tamsin's door, uh, and I'll be like, you know, thank you for. Thank you for helping me earlier. Uh, I really wanted to make sure that we we got some intel from our lovely host. Of course, of course. Yeah, it's it seems like we're on the on on the track for it. Yeah, and uh, you know, as belters, I think it's important that we really trust each other. Of course, of course. So. I want to know what else do you know? And I'm happy to share what I know as well. Uh, right now, not much. I, I, I'm, I mean, I've, I've pretty much told everyone what I've found. Uh, there, there hasn't been much that I've, I've tapped into yet. I'm hoping we'll find more tonight, though. Real quick, and too. I'm, for Tamsin, I was gonna put this out there. Um, so you can actually tell, like, because the way that, like, the, the, in the expansion, you have the AI expert systems, you can tell your bug um, and your data pad, that your data pad is constantly bringing the information in, you can tell it to pick out certain things and alert you to them. Is there certain things you want it to have alert you? So you don't have to listen to the whole um, conversation. Ooh. Yeah, let's, let's... Um... You want to put like the company names in there, or like? Uh, of course, okay. yeah, yeah. Let's let's put the company names, the the names of the people we know, mm -hmm. um, and um, and the uh, the LDS folks. Okay. Uh, you do get a ping early on, and you have a little message in the. Uh, do you want it transcribed, or do you want to listen to the actual conversation? I would rather have it transcribed, I think. Right, the transcription uh, in up. code though, so it's not like anyone can look over my shoulder and and the yeah, the data will only, only yeah, it'll reflect you can say it's only reflects to you. Um it, it comes up as Nico it's Nico saying he says, I don't give I don't give a fuck what you think of him. Sebastian, Mr. Pope is our best customer. You do what he says. And it sounds like he's mm. talking to, and, and then you get another part of the conversation well. You know, I, I felt he was, uh, you know, he needs to tip better and he shouldn't be so demanding. And Nico's like, you go up there and you, you you know, you make sure he's, uh, he get him and his crew get everything they want. Okay, does, is there a specific name that we catch that Nico's talking to? Um, you don't get the guy's name, you're just guessing, because it's, it's just listening, but you guess it's like some, it's a subordinate for sure. I'm, I'm guessing yeah. it's a it's a hotel employee, it's but I'm yeah. just trying to figure out if there's a specific one, because if there is, mm -hmm. we can hone in no, on it. No details on that. He didn't- he Any didn't, contextual clues about where he might be? Does the bug give like this me- guy, This guy does, uh, the, the bug doesn't give you enough details like uh, where it is in the place. But it does tell okay. you that this guy is working the floor that Pope's staying on. Okay. That that would be your your, your best uh, connection. I'll pass that along, okay. and that uh, I think Sisatna we can probably buy that guy. It sounds like he's uh. It sounds like Pope's a bit of a cheapskate, Ooh. and yeah. I would He's I, not happy about it, and I think we might have an in there. So uh, then I will take that. I guess I will figure out who that person is, because I think for Cecilia, that's probably pretty easy, because she's already tipped probably a bunch of people <laughs> at the resort um, and like, or and or had conversations. So she's going to figure out who that person is and then get them into her network as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
right. uh, Marv and Esther, the two belters are off uh, <laughs> doing what they're doing. Um, I am keeping my advisors posted. Oh. <laughs> Uh, getting uh, <laughs> consolidating notes um, and uh, I think that I the, the two of us um, will what do you think Marv do you think we would have like stayed in the room or kind of headed I, out yeah I think after like you know settling in right uh, and, and kind of getting ready uh, I, I think there's a sense where uh, Marv, even in spite of like all of this going on, seems like very nonplussed about the whole business dealing side of things, and so he's gonna suggest like, you want to go like see if they got like a, a coffee shop or something, go uh, uh, find a place to just uh, sit down, get a little work done. That, I think that makes sense, and makes sense to do it in a place where we might s mm -hmm. get an eye on somebody. Um, that way no no yeah, sure. to stay in here well you know i mean the room is nice and all but uh, uh i feel like i i could be in a better uh mental place to work if i could just see out all the all the the the, the gases <laughs> in the atmosphere those trailing <laughs> plumes of sulfur are really inspiring that, that that's what i need to work better today so, sulfur behind a dome beautiful in the same room yeah. no um Proximity is a changes perception, right? But yeah, um, yeah, there is a coffee shop. You, you saw a coffee shop out there. You can go and hang out in a little cafe, and they have baked goods. And um, and you know, having spent the last few months, um, both of you off of out of Mars or out of Earth, you haven't had real coffee for a while, and they probably have real coffee here. So, do they have lattes? Absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil myself and get a latte. So it is soy milk, though. I will say that it's soy milk. The sacrifices we make. <laughs> okay. Um, so, hey, so the two of them, uh, do, you, do you let the other party know that you're leaving the rest of them? They're, if they They're if busy. they have hold themselves up, then we're not going to like, I would I would not knock. Okay. I've, I've learned when belters are behind closed doors, you just let them be. I imagine there's something that resembles a group chat that I will just put a quick, like, headed for coffee, um, Meet us there if you the, want. The it. two of you go to this cafe that's in there, and it has a nice view of like the this kind of the dome area. It's you get this kind of uh, the yellow light coming in is really interesting. Um, the way you can see the clouds dancing out there and such like that too. Um, and uh, you come in and they you sit down and uh, the waiter comes over and says, "Oh, uh, what can I get you?" I'll have a latte, please. Uh... Mm, good choice. Good choice. Uh, black coffee, three sugars, please. Absolutely. Um, and he, uh, he, he goes over, starts prepping them. Um, as you guys are sitting there, you can see those other parties kind of sitting around. Um, Marv, you, actually both of you, uh, Esther, you know what a study group looks like. Marv, you know what a bunch of geeks geeking out over technology looks like. Uh, and they, they're, they're, the overlap of that Venn diagram is pretty deep. Oh, that is a circle, friend. <laughs> is a a circle. Circle. It is a circle. <laughs> um, Sorry, guys. Uh, a few of us have gone to grad school. We know what the real is. Uh, it, it, it's all too real. Um, Anyone's going to college know it. That's it, a very real thing. But anyway, you um, you do see these people kind of sitting there, and um, um, it's it's a it's a, a woman and a man uh, along with a, a looks like probably an assistant you think, and they're kind of talking over some data pads, pushing some numbers around. Um, you actually think back to your the dossiers you got. Uh, and Marv, you would know this uh, more so than anyone because you're, you're a geek. Uh, you're pretty sure this is Oksana Butenko with uh, Stefan Win uh, Winsick, who is their head uh, fusion drive engineer. Uh, Winsick is actually. But no Yakiv to be seen. No Make, make a listen seen. check. Make a listen check. Hey, okay. I'm not going to have you make it because you, you absolutely 100% hear it. You hear, you hear an annoying child playing video games in the corner. Yeah. Na, na. That is um, about seven on the die. All right, not a problem. So yeah, you kind of you hear like you're looking for your key, but you don't hear it. But like you're like waiting to hear like a teenager like complain about being bored in the coffee shop, but you're waiting for it. Um, but you do see Oksana, uh, Stefan, 
And uh, it looks like the assistant, the assistant wasn't on your dossier, but it could be whoever. But you do see them. And, and uh, Marv, you do you do uh, you have read uh, Win Six work? You are aware of his his advanced fusion drives and stuff like that. He's a little older. Guy's probably in like uh, late fifties, sure. early sixties, but he's uh, he's someone you respect. Sure, sure. And just from context clues, what does it seem like they're talking about as we try to listen in? Like, like all grad students are going over a PowerPoint. I mean, they're, they're going over the presentation okay. for the day. Right. Like, they're just, no, they're going over a presentation. Like, it, it's uh, they're, looking, they're talking some numbers and pointing stuff, and uh, you can see Oxana kind of telling like, you know, why don't you phrase it like this when you talk, and like, you know, make sure you don't go the too too technical babble unless they really ask. You know, she's she's kind of more of a, a businesswoman, if you will. Uh, does have an engineering background, but she's more conscientious of that. Sure. Okay, but nothing stands out as like, oh, they have some you know revolutionary new technology or anything. Not from fantastic. this distance. They they're just rehearsing a speech. Okay. And, yeah. And uh, less interested. They in that are now. they are excited about what they're talking about. I will say that, and you can see the the wind okay. is like oh, this is going to change things or whatever it is, or it could change things for all of us. It's a great opportunity and stuff like that. So. Well, sure. And is it how how many folks are in here aside from their nerdy table and our nerdy uh, table? There's about another like uh, three tables occupied. Some people are sitting in bathing suits, eating like, you know, just got out of the pool or whatever, or getting ready to go to the pool. Um, some people are just kind of, you know, uh, shooting the shit, talking about, uh, you know, business and how hard their life is as an entrepreneur. I mean, like, you know, there, there's some there's a variety of of things. Uh, you can definitely there's tell. There's a lot of people talking loudly about uh, just yeah, or, or about pr their privileged bullshit. You know, um, very privileged here. Uh, I, I will conceal my shock um, and ask. Well, and and kind of think through. Um, you know, they're in the middle of this coffee shop that's got a bunch of people in it mm -hmm. talking about this project. They're probably not going to be talking about confidential material. Um, this. Do I get the sense that this is a performance? Potentially. Ooh, ooh, that's a damn good question. Uh, I'm going to call... You can use your empathy for that if you want to. Yay! A thing I'm decent at. I like All how right. I, I totally wrote that talent that said, if you fail at empathy... Like... So so I got a double. Ooh. Yay! And the total is a dirty 20. Dirty 20. That's actually excellent. Ooh. Yes. Wow. So, um, and what did you, you get in the, uh, the drama die? Uh, six. Oh yeah, so you actually my like, beautiful Abraxas six. You you do sit in there and you get into the you can kind of start pick up the conversation. Your your anthropology uh, senses start tingling, and you get that they are they know what each are talking about, but they're not saying it out loud. They they're kind of implying portions of their conversation just to practice it here. Um, but the idea one of the things that you pick up is that uh, Winsec the the scientist. Um, he's probably not great at talking to crowds and having him try to talk through this thing in a public space is kind of practice for him. Gotcha. He's, a little, he's a little nervous, but he's excited, but he's nervous. Okay. Is that empathy enough? And, I'm, and that's, me, that's me using your stunts for a thing. I'm going to give you a bonus thing. Make another listen check, too. You can make a bonus. I'm going to have you use the uh, one of the uh, cool abilities of the stunt. You can make an immediate hey. perception check. So I'm rolling again, yes? Yeah, and this is going to listen, not... Okay, that is uh, a triple, and that is fifteen. Oh wow! Yeah, Jesus, save some for everyone else. Um, so yeah, you uh, you listen into you're, you're listening to the conversation now closely, and you're you're getting the layout of the presentation. Um, they're talking about having some sort of potential um, solution to keep have it go very fast, have the ship go very fast, not do the generational element, not do the cryogenics. They're talking about get them there, like within like. 25 years it, it, it's it's a pretty shocking uh according to everything you've heard everyone's saying like 100 years they're saying they'll do it 25 years to get them there um so they're they have some sort of advanced engine they're looking at yeah. the question is how do you keep everyone alive and not turn into you know jelly right they got some other sleeve interesting do you want to convey this to uh Fine, doctor. Uh, yeah, this is, if we've got the group chat going, I will put it in the group chat. Well, that's interesting. Uh... And if, uh, well, and this is a good question. Uh, Marv, do you speak Belter Creole? 
Uh, I, I picked up like two or three words in the same way that like you use one of those, you know, English to Spanish dictionaries. Uh, when you, you, you have the Google Translate of, uh, <laughs> right, of yeah, Dr. Creel. I, 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 I know like the basics, like, hello, goodbye, <laughs> thank you, where's the bathroom, that kind of thing, and that is the extent of How it. to go like this if you're if you're losing air fast? Because um, the first thing I'll do is write it in Belter Creole in the group chat, and if yeah. I see Marv looking confused, I will write it again in a way that he can understand. So if this just popped in the group chat, then I'm going to say Cecilia is like, gently nudges Tamsin and says, we need to go there now. <laughs> we need we need to be in that coffee shop already. Okay. You guys start making your way down there. Yeah. Um, they, um, yeah, so you, this is like, I mean, Mar, like the Martians want to go this fast and it's like, they don't want to, but they don't want to kill their people doing it. So it's like, how, what the hell are they doing? Right, right. The tech there has got to be something experimental if even real at this point. Interesting. Uh, okay, you know what? Uh, is there any indication that our uh, Belter companions are on their way, or do you just start heading over? Yeah, do you uh, message us in case we need to hold them? Yeah, I would them? I would definitely, Cecilia would proactively group chat emoji, whatever the Belter emoji is, where <laughs> I'll be there, right? <laughs> um, will be there right away. So she'll let them know because she wants them to make sure that, I mean, that she, that they are held there uh, because this is juicy and she wants a piece of this action. Yeah, all right, okay, all right. Uh, so in that case, uh, you know, I think uh, we'll just kind of uh, keep keep an eye and an ear out uh, to see if anything changes here. Um, is there a way to basically turn on the way that you can leave an AirPod as a as a mic, mm -hmm. basically at range? If you're away from it, yeah. uh, you can turn it on. Oh yeah, it's a weird spy tech feature. If you don't, if you don't know now. No, you know. that's super easy. Um, can can they do that while we're on our way, so we can keep up with what's sure. happening? Sure, it may not pick up everything, but it'll it'll help out a little bit. Yeah. Would cool. my drone be better equipped to that? Uh, so your drone isn't like discreet. I mean, it's it's like this big, um, and it makes sure. some noise. And it, it does uh, make some noise, although um, it doesn't make as much noise as like our drones in real life and Earth because it doesn't have to propel as much because there's less gravity. And, I, and sure. I'll, by the way, it is, a, it is an atmosphere only drone. It doesn't work in uh, no atmosphere. And the sulfur, yeah, good the sulfur also would eat it a lot. <laughs> good to know. Yeah, that's that. that uh, cool. Um, okay, I'm just trying to figure if there's a way we could get a, a, a listening device closer. If that seems to be something they're interested in. Um, uh, do you do you have the where do you have the drone? Do you have it in your pocket or where, where you, do you have uh, the table? I imagine I have like a, like a a, 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 a a bag of some variety. You know, like a laptop bag uh, over my shoulder. But oh. uh, in addition to you know some light reading is, so and you, things like yeah, that. So you're there, you, have your, you have your data pad and you have this thing in the bag and you're kind of going through your bag and this you, you pull your head out of your bag for a second you check your stuff real quick and there's this like uh, short like for you, you think I mean honestly you think of this, this kid's like maybe 12 but he's actually like 16 this kid's standing there and he's like hey is that an X1A2? Is well, that shit. He's pointing the drone yeah, you know your stuff. Yeah, my dad got me one of those a few years back. It was a lot of fun. Oh, nice. I, actually, this is uh, the first time I have ever tried to uh, pilot this uh, off the ship. Do you have any pointers? You gotta be kind of careful. They they bank a little bit. But you always gotta be conscientious of... of I, I never tried to fly one in the low gravity like this. I only flew them on Earth. Sure, sure. Well, let, let, let's, I mean, we got a little bit of room here. Let's let's uh, toss it up in the air and see if we can't, uh, you, you can show me some pointers while we're doing it. How about that? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. He, he kind of, he, you do want to hand him the, the, you know, the camera controls? Or yeah, what? sure, That's sure. Great. We'll get it set up and I'll let him kind of show me what his process is and then I'll, I'll uh, yeah. learn and try to yeah, emulate. That, that up and down is a real problem. See how it goes, Ooh, it goes way up. You gotta, you gotta cut back on it. So you have to go into the calibration settings here and you gotta t you gotta tune it down. You gotta tune it down. The the atmosphere is pretty good. It's pretty comfortable on Earth, but it's a little bit much. So he's he's like this kid's like geeking out about it. He knows he seems to know a bit about this thing. It's like kind of yeah. scary. 
Sure. Okay. So now, when you access those calibration settings, just one more time, show me how you got to that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was looking at the drone and not at the, the pad. Yeah, he, he shows you and everything, no problem. He's like, yeah, right there. He's like, go check this out. And he starts buzzing around the room. And he's doing pretty good with it. And then, like, the people you guys were kind of checking out, he, like, buzzes it past them, like, right between their things. <laughs> he's kind of laughing. He goes, and yeah. again, and you, see the, you see the the woman look over and goes, yeah, Keith, what are you doing? And he's like, he's like, oh, this guy let me play with his drone. Isn't that fun, Mom? And she's like, take that outside. What okay. is outside? Well, I mean, outside of the, the, the cafe. <laughs> Not, Fair enough. Not where there's glassware. Okay. Outside is where there's not glassware. Let's go with that definition. My, my apologies, ma'am. Uh, uh, he was just teaching me how to use it. This is my first time mm -hmm. flying this particular drone. Well, if you can, if she's like, well, um, you keep play, feel free to go with your friend outside and, and play with the, the drone. Don't, just don't do it in here. We got business here, you know, keep, but, you know, stay safe, okay? And she's like, all sure. right, Mom. All right, Mom. And he, like, he's like, yeah. He's kind of ir irked about it. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna say, yeah, we can step outside for a minute. I I, I have a couple questions for you about uh, mm -hmm. repair on this thing. And I'm gonna look at Esther and just like give like that knowing look of, I'm buying time, please make sure we use it. <laughs> and I'm gonna walk out there and say, okay, so talk to me uh, about, uh, what's up with the little the little motors in oh, there? Man. I like, haven't seen anything quite this size before. He's like, look, it's all about yaw control. Without yaw control, you got nothing. And he's, he's like buzzing around. <laughs> like, and he's like doing a loop to it. He's actually pretty good with it. He's like, wow, this is a lot looser than like on Earth. And he's like, he's like kind of unleashing it. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll go back to the. Uh, I don't feel like geeking about drones forever. <laughs> but, um, How is is Cecilia and Tabson yeah. anywhere close? Yeah, at yeah this you guys point? you guys walk out. Yeah, you guys walk down the hallway and come around the corner. You see uh, Marv there with clearly Yakiv Botenko, who you recognize, playing with a drone, flying it around, and he seems to be having a good time. And this child is like really, he's just needing an adult to acknowledge him. I'm glad it's Marv to Valentine. What what better role model could there be? As you work Many. for as you work for Anderson Dawes. <laughs> Many better role models. Dawes and the butcher. Yeah, and the butcher of Anderson Station. Yeah. Wow, that's cool, man. Who are you here with? I'm here role models ever. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's 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 hanging out with that. Um but yeah, you, you see this this child out there, um, and uh the two of you kind of come around the corner. You're welcome to either interact with the Kiev or go into the cafe uh, where you can clearly see Esther is sitting there really watching. Um, and it's, it is interesting because Esther is like much more focused than you have seen her elsewhere. Like, like, like less, I don't say, would you, would you say less nervous, Emily? Is that a fair thing? Like you're more like well, in the it's, zone Well, it's or? one of those things where I have, I've moved it so that like nominally I'm looking at like the pad in front of me, mm. but my my i'm my focus mm -hmm. is very clearly like very trained the, on what's and the the, the data pads you guys have are clear they're like they look right. like just like acrylic but then they right. light up so you can actually look through literally look through it and kind of rig it yeah. so it's yeah like a, like like holes in a newspaper yeah. you know whatever <laughs> type thing. okay i think cecilia is really torn because she knows who the kid is but at the same time he seems to be doing pretty well with marv and i feel like she can see how well they're getting along. So she doesn't want to ruin that relationship because if she said something, they would probably stop playing. Um, and it's better to let Marv than handle that relationship oh. and she can try to get back to it, I guess. Uh, so, so Cecilia will um, go in and check on Esther who definitely probably needs more of Cecilia's help. All right. <laughs> well, look, I gotta, I gotta, okay. You go in and uh, you take a, uh, you go in with Esther, but. Yeah. Jen, I'm going to have you do the honors. Jen, you got to roll a D6 for me. Just one D6. And tell me okay. on it. Oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> someone, someone remembered the can, which was our high end one off $300 donation. And for an immediate churn 30 event. Oh, sweet mother of God. So, yeah. Um, Jen, you got to do the honors of rolling the uh, the D six for this, uh, and to determine how, the degree 
of of our event here. Um, it, it's it's a big one. It's a six. Actually, six is better. <laughs> six is better than than uh, I get a better okay. roll. Yeah. Um, Mar, uh, so as you as you kind of come in, uh, Esther, you notice that one of the people at the table gets up and starts walking out of the room. Uh, it looks like the doctor that was there, and uh, he goes up and he goes, "Marv de Valentine, Marv, you've been made. Uh, you've been you've been made." Uh, Luckily, Marv was using his own name. Yeah, he was using his own name. But um, by who however, have I been made? Life, is this you, have, you have been made by Steph, Dr. Stefan uh, Winsick, uh, the head okay. the head engineer for Botanko uh, Engineering. He goes, what are you doing here? Oh, you, well, I suppose I could ask you the same question, but uh, <laughs> uh, out here on a bit of contract work. I, I, I read your I read your paper about the diversion uh, energy using it for the rail guns and the fusion drives, but. Uh, uh, I mean, it's such a young talent to come up with such a such an idea. It's brilliant. I mean, you're going to put Mars ahead of the game by decades here. Well, I, I appreciate that. The, the, those kind words. Uh, I'm just, you know, one person, obviously. But uh, uh, really, what did you? What I'm going to have you make a willpower self control test here because this is a guy that you idolize, and he's geeking out on you. Yeah. yeah While yeah, yeah. Okay. this is happening, yes. can we slip a bug in his oh. pocket? <laughs> okay. Okay. Can we Why use you this to our confetti? advantage? Um, right. while, while these I, I will, these two gentlemen are, will, are geeking about will, each other, I will, gi- I will give you that one. Um, so yeah, uh, if we're gonna have uh, it's, Cecilia, sounds like uh, you kind of went in. Uh, we're gonna have let uh, uh, Tamsin uh, do the bug. Uh, this is a mm-hmm. sleight of hand test um, or dexterity, if you have that instead. Um, I believe on your Let's sheet, see. yeah, I think you would be. This is, it's dexterity, yeah. So plus two. They're the same, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything I can throw onto this? Not you can really. get, you can burn fortune if you want to. If you don't, if you fail on it, I will say that. So it's a six. Well, oh, oh, yeah, oh, I have to oh, roll, three. roll three six. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, three is that six? Oh. Oh, and twelve. Twelve. Twelve plus the two. Okay. Uh, what was your lowest number yeah, on it? What was your lowest number? Uh, two. On two. Um, if you and that burn, was on the chaos die. If you burn. Oh, oh, that's that's bad. Okay. Uh, if you burn twelve fortune, you can push that to a six and succeed on this. If burn fortune, to, uh, yeah, up the up the roll, yeah. If you want to succeed on this, it's going to be extreme circumstance. Six minutes fifteen. All right. Okay. So, so you burn, so you burn the fortune, and you kind of barely pull it off. Uh, and he goes, "Oh, excuse me, miss." Uh, oh, he, he sorry, sorry. Yeah, he's all, he's all sorry. But yeah, you bug their head scientist. Uh, Winsick is bugged. Yes. Um, but yeah, he goes, he goes, Marv. I, 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 I thought you. I mean, everyone said you just disappeared. You ran off into the belt to do something or another, but. Oh, I'm, I'm research. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Where, where are my manners? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, Dr. Stefan Winsick, uh, it's a pleasure to meet hey, you. Hey, I'm, I'm familiar with your work. Don't n- n- the, the pleasure is all mine. I uh, have, of course, been been keeping up with uh, a lot of your recent, uh, uh, you know, theoretical work. Are you, uh, are, are you working with Tycho now, or who, who are you here with? So uh, we're here with a small. I, honestly, I can't even pronounce the goddamn name S-C-H. of the thing. S-C-H? It's, it's called SCH. Uh, oh wow, one of these uh, these upstarts, huh? It, well, it, like I said, it's contract work. Uh, looking for uh, some some uh, basic kind of know how is there getting that portion of, of their business up and running. But uh, uh, for, really, I'm here for a glorified vacation. If I'm being honest ah, with you, uh, it's all, it is nice. It is nice. I, I'm here for work. I. I uh, the Botankos really want this one to succeed for them. They've <laughs> we got a hell of a solution up ahead. What what, um, uh, what 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 kind of stuff are you guys working on exactly? Well, yeah, I feel like it's nothing out of the ordinary. You know, using kind of some of the research that I've done, I'll say you know we got a a, a working a working um, uh, prototype for uh, a kind of engine that I think would do the job, get us there. Right? It's we're we're, we're talking generation here, but. but what, but what's your oh, generational shift? Yeah, that seems to be a popular solution. Uh, we're looking for a non, a non uh, traditional means, and for, uh, but we're not so sure the uh, the Latter Day Saints are going to go for it. But that's kind of why Oksana thought it was a good idea to bring uh, Yakiv. He's like, hey, Yakiv. Yakiv like, uh, he's like, hey, Doctor Winsick, and he's like, just play the thing. Yeah, this this uh, talented young pilot is here uh, teaching me how to use this drone I recently uh, mm-hmm. recently acquired. Oh, well, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, he's a he keeps a 
got a hell of a green thumb back home, um, but the, his parents wanted him to go into the industry. But I think there's, there's something to be done. Maybe get some get a job on Ganymede or something like that. And yeah, he was like, yeah, that'd be cool. Ganymede's cool. <laughs> uh, I've read great things about the discoveries uh, taking place on Ganymede. It's like, they, he's, like he's like, have you had the soy milk here? The soy milk here is from Ganymede. And he's like, he's like uh, super, like he's like, he started to geek out. You're starting to talk about plants to him. And he's like, that's his jam. The pilot is a lot of fun, but this guy's like, this guy's like plants are dope. I, I did, in fact, just have some uh, soy milk in my latte. So uh, uh, are you saying are awesome. I should? You saying I should get the, the milk by itself and, and he take, he takes see a, if it? He kind of takes a second when the drone has a hover. He's like, he's like, the coffee, the milk, all that comes from plants. They grow all that on Ganymede. They have these giant mirrors in the sky, and they reflect the light down. And then they have these huge domes bigger than this, and they grow soybeans and food, and they feed everyone. And that's what I want to do. I want to feed people. I want to make them have a better life. But mom and dad just want everyone to go fast. And Winsex like, he's like, well, like, you know, go fast and keep them alive. And, you know, he's like, by all means, all these ships are going to need food. Yeah, keep you, you know, you can figure out a way to grow stuff on the fly. And he's like, maybe I could. Uh, he's like, but uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, no, I'm going to I'm going to go to school for, uh, you know, into getting the substrate. I'm really into substrate. OK, where, where are you fixing to go to school? Oh, man, there's a university on, on Ganymede. It'd be kind of fun to go to, but mom and dad says it's not that fancy. Like no one, no one knows who you are. They don't know who we are, but they want no. to go to school on Earth. But if a... they got a good program there, it doesn't matter the prestige of the university if the the specific program is going to be the one that meets your needs, right? Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, right? Mars isn't known for like the best like uh, physics degree in the world, but it met my needs, and then I was able to get involved with their engineering program, which kinda... is far more uh, <laughs> prestigious, you know. The the um, the Winsick and, and Winsick kind of looks at you. He's like he's like I'm. Like I, he's like, most of the Earthers I, most of the people I know on Earth would would kill for a shot at at, at, at a, a university on Mars. Your guys' education is top notch. Make no mistake about it. He's like, don't the, doc, the good doctor is being very very uh, humble here, Yaki. But he's like, um, but look, he's all, um, yeah, we'd love to I'd love to catch up with you and everything like that too. So start like I, I start gonna be a hard, hard time, hard pitch for them here. But uh, yeah, love to hear what you have to say. Uh, are, you, are you going to the mixer tomorrow tonight? Uh, I, I believe that is our plan. Yeah, uh, perhaps we can uh, uh, swap swap life uh, uh, stories and and maybe trade some notes uh, over, over drinks this evening. Yeah, I was like, in, excellent. Well, I, I had no idea you were working so close to Earth, a Luna Corporation. Wow. Um, well, y you know, uh, sometimes fortune takes you in strange places. That's great. He's like, all right. So we'll go back into the we'll go back into the after we have our moment here with Yakiv and everything. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> uh, he, um, uh, Tamsin and uh, Cecilia both make it over the table. Uh, he just like like I, I'm gonna assume you guys order just like whatever she's having, this kind of thing, just get them quick. Um, although it is shocking how good the coffee is. It's like like it it, it hits, it's like that real cup it's, of coffee. It's grown on Ganymede. <laughs> it's grown on Ganymede. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, you, uh, you guys, yeah, 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 Study, I studied my, my, my Belter crayon. Yeah, yeah, the caca water, yeah, I love it. Um, no, it's, it's work. It is, it's work, yeah, it's great, I love it. Uh, so, but yeah, you guys are sitting there, and you can see, um, you can see Oksana and the assistant are kind of talking, and, and Oksana's like, uh, you know, just kind of, she's a little exasperated because her, her guy, she needs to make the presentation, which kind of took off and everything, but, um, She's kind of pointed. She's pointed Doctor Doctor Ben to Valentine a little bit. I think what Cecilia might do. She, let's let's do a bold move. I love it. I think Please. that hey. Cecilia will walk over uh, to the table. She's holding her coffee, and I love that I actually had coffee in this little mic here. And, it, um, so and the coffee here is in is in cups, not in bulbs. There's, you don't have to drink it through a nipple. Oh. Even better. So I'm drink. I'm drinking it. I almost don't know how to drink it because I'm used to drinking it on yes. nipple. Uh, but I'm trying to. <laughs> Cecilia's trying to play it cool. Uh, who, who who here hasn't had their coffee out of a nipple? I mean, honestly, uh, there's a few nights. Yeah, there's a few nights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And she's gonna she's gonna walk over to the table where um, Oksana mm -hmm. is and just offer to help and just be like, oh, you know, just like very friendly, like, oh, oh. hello. You know, hey, uh, so I'm I'm Cecilia. 
uh, I just saw that maybe you need somebody to bounce some ideas off of, or just run the run your um, run your presentation off of. And you know, we've already finished ours, so we always love some friendly competition. So if there's you know no secrets, I'd love to help you out. Oh uh, well, you know, uh, thank you, Cecilia. Uh, and she stands up to go shake your hand. Um, yeah. Seeing you pretty well dressed, and she says, uh, "Oh, um, well, Oksana Butenko, uh, Butenko Engineering. Um, let me. Um, no, you know, I'm just. We're just kind of uh, working here through. I have my administrative assistant here, Susanna. She's doing a good job. Um, we have a presentation we're doing later, and uh, she kind of like goes, she kind of like nudges Susanna, and Susanna closes up whatever they're working on, and is like, uh, no, we're we're here on business, and so that you are, are you here on pleasure? Oh, I mean, it's always pleasurable to be out, you know." Uh, but certainly right now I'm with a, we're, we're a small up and coming group. Uh, very proud of the work that we're doing though. We're mm. called SCH. You probably haven't heard of us, but I hope you will in the, no. in the future. I hope we can be friends in the future. Oh, well, Batenko, and we're here on a very distinct call. Are you, are you here part of the, looking at the LDS as the client? Yes. Um, oh, wow. To be totally honest, I don't think we're we're going to get it, but we wanted to throw our our hat into the proverbial ring, so to speak. So that's um yeah no we we <laughs> we we got wind a little bit a little while ago of some of the ideas floating around, uh, and uh, we went bold with it. We went with uh, we're going with a very bold solution here. Um, so bold solutions are, I mean I won't I won't kid you I am. The, the boldness of the LDS Church to do this project is just. I mean, mind-boggling to me, but they want to do it. I'd like to be in on it. it the the price is right, and it's 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 a it's a once in a three every three four generation project to pull off. So I, who am I to say no to it? And uh, perhaps my uh, I just kind of points over to the kid, but my son might be able to uh, enjoy the fruits of our, of our labor. You know. Well, I, I certainly hope that if you can pull it off, but it sounds amazing. I'd love to hear more, especially after you pitch or before you pitch, maybe mm. even hear the pitch. I, I'm well, just curious, as I, a curious person. You're, I mean, absolutely. Uh, I would, um, I just, you, you seem friendly enough. Uh, we appreciate the endeavor. Uh, we've had a little bit of, uh, there's been a little bit of, we'll say unfriendly competition here. Mm. Um, you know, mm. we're certainly intimidated by the advances Tycho has made over the, the decades. And uh, we're certainly um, intimidated by the unknown right now. Uh, you, you haven't, uh, this is this is me being vulnerable. I'm trying to be open with you. Um, and this is business. What, and what do you do for SCH again? I really just help with um... You know, a little bit of making sure that we have a good public relations. Mm, outreach, so, so, so outreach. Important. It's it's what I specialize in is outreach and communication. Um, I leave the engineering and and all of that other technical stuff. Honestly, if you explain to me what you're doing here, I probably wouldn't mm. understand it. But I want to offer a friendly, open ear to you. Mm. Anytime you need anything, please ask me. Consider well, me Cecilia, your close personal the, friend. Well, let me give you a piece of advice, Cecilia, uh, and this yes. would be for anyone. Um, whatever Pope Enterprise is working on, it's something, and we we've been oh. trying to figure it out for weeks now. Uh, well, let me just say that if. If I catch any wind of what Pope Enterprise might be doing, may I reach out to you personally and just oh, share in, a, in a, an incredibly friendly gesture? And she, she shoots over like her details or contact information. Do you want to shoot over your contact information? Yeah, and I'll shoot over my contact information with my fake last name. All right, Tamsin. Is Jones. there is there any way? I know we can do the the literal bug drop, mm -hmm. but can we do a, a virtual bug drop to Susanna's computer? Or, or oh, try to get into the tablet. Okay. Um, yeah, you can try to use yours, and they are networking the same thing, so you can certainly try to hack. This would be a technology test. Yes, um, as please. You, as you attempt to, uh, and you please, have a, please, you have a plus please. seven have a to plus that. Plus seven, and then it's plus plus technology plus so so it's, it's plus seven total. Be. Okay, so it's uh, that's a double uh, with a uh, it's six, so it's ten with a four on the chaos die. Ooh. 
Okay. So 17 total. Okay. 17 total. All right. And you got, you got a bunch. So you actually like, I'm going to have you use what's called speed demon. You got to get through it quickly. And actually okay. what I'm going to have you do, it wasn't me. Uh, you can actually make it appear that someone else hacked the computer. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, who do you want to make it seem like hacked the computer is my question. How worried are we about this new company? Uh, your your own company or the or no 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 oh. the um uh Tyco. the 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 hybrid company oh uh, you haven't seen them here and no one's really checked on them um it's unclear who the team is on there either too like they haven't registered a proper team it seems like they're disorganized I'll say that okay um well um we'll, we'll, let, you, we'll let you figure it out okay so you, you get into the computer. And you can see the immediate things they pulled up. Basically, it's like this presentation is what they were last working on. And it goes through and shows what looks to be um, a ship with a very, very high powered engine that they can get. They think they can get there in like maybe a third of the time that everybody else can do, which is they're aiming for 100 years. The cost, though, is that they are using um, they're going to put everyone in fluorocarbon liquid. Uh, they're going to flood the chambers with it so people can take a high G burn while they breathe liquid oxygen uh, for several decades. <laughs> um, Fun and exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are some uh, there and you do come up. Um, it, it looks like they're, they're trying to reassure that like the lifestyle. The, the, it, it looks like one of their major concerns is trying to pitch this as a lifestyle of living in liquid oxygen. <laughs> won't be that imposing <laughs> um yeah it's, it's, it's not there's that no imposing, right? like, it's not that different um, no not that different to be to be swimming rather than yeah than, you know getting around your normal um, ways and, yeah so they, they, but they do have this high powered engine and that's kind of the solution it is a radical solution and it is one that it, it is a moonshot uh literally uh for them okay. but they're taking a shot at this so my question is, who would be the most damaging person for them to discover would be packing them or stealing their um, information? You, I mean, as far as damaging goes, uh, you haven't really evaluated the other people's projects uh, and the like. The the one company that the, the hybrid company seems like they're like they're disorganized. Lutanko seems like they have a really like like very far shot solution. Tyco um, is usually the, the kind of like they're, they're the steady ones, but we but, don't want to put heat on Tyco. Mal, Mal Quick is the one with the most resources and would be able to pull in like if, if whatever the the LDS would request, these guys would make happen. And Mal sure. is let's throw it on Mal Quick. Mal let's Mal make him look. Let's make him look uh, dishonest. Okay. Um, and and I'm gonna go ahead and not. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a trail intentionally. I'm gonna not yeah. make it a clean hack. It just shows that um, like uh, like someone accessed it from the certain terminal, and then there's like a, there's like initials that match up with the mal quick rep that's here. Sure. Right. Yeah. Really. That works. Like, you put you put the room number on or something. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, so whoops. You, you, whoops. Whoops. Charge the coffee to the room. <laughs> Who knew? Um, all right. Weird that. Esther, uh, do you, you're watching uh, Cecilia work. You're watching Tamsin work. Uh, I guess my question is, are you taking notes on the other company? Or are you taking notes on how the belters are working here? Passions. At this moment, um, I think it would be on the belters because I feel like I have a pretty good sense of, of what's been happening with the presentation. Mm, mm. Okay. So this is more useful information about practices and things like that. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, so you kind of watch them out for a little bit. Um, they, uh, Marv, you hang out with the, the doctor. You guys kind of shoot it. Uh, and uh, Tamsin, you do have a copy of their presentation. Uh, you did. You did manage to. I'm, I'm assuming you would pull a copy of it. I just assume. Oh. No, no, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to impose, Easy. but yeah. Um, because this is something that Doctor DeValentin can make sense of a lot more, uh, for sure. So yeah, whenever. Um, uh, do you want to go in the group chat and do you guys want to like try to reason being here? Or? Yeah, let's do that. I also, if I get a, a moment alone on my own terminal, mm -hmm. I'd like to drop a little bit of that intel onto my other group's server to kind of show, mm -hmm. look what I did, okay. flaunt it just, just a smidge. You, Not all it, of it, but 
you, little you, teeny drop. You encrypt a, a type beam. You might hear back from them in a day or something like that. But yeah, you you send them out some stuff. You drop it on their forum. Um, yeah, it's it's literally just like my my proof that I that I did the thing, yeah. or that I am doing the thing. I feel like I feel like this world would be it, with the the, a, the aspect of light delay is amazing, and it would make things like live journal just that much better. Um, <laughs> um, Forms are a big thing in the Expanse universe, actually. Uh, so, but yeah, you you drop you drop it on there, and your post will go up and hit the series servers in um, in a, a, a like two hours, something like that. Um, okay, so you guys, uh, Ricky, do you want to meet back in the room before you go to the mixer, or do you want to like do it here in the coffee shop, or? I would say privacy is key. Yeah, and I think Cecilia so. really wants privacy, yeah. so uh, let's go back. You pull Do we have anything to to um, kind of safety proof our rooms to there's sweep our lot. rooms and make sure? And they're, they're soundproof also. They're all they're all set up for very privacy. This place does pride itself on privacy. Understand that value um, and the like. Okay. So, um, but yeah, you can uh, pull it up on the on the screen of the room, and uh, you can have the the good doctor sift through it. Um, cool. But yeah, you pull the, you you pull it up, Marv. You take a look at it. Uh, it's advanced. Uh, they're low. They're they're fairly. Um, they don't have a high G burn they can hit, but they, they can maintain a low G burn. So like a, like a third of a G is kind of their top. But the idea is that they can go for a very long time at that that speed and keep everyone alive. The way they're doing it though, because their acceleration hits such a, well, they, this, um, they're gonna accelerate to such a degree at some point is that um, they're, gonna, they're gonna have everyone breathe liquid oxygen for a while. Um, it's unclear though, and you, you've looked at this uh, thought process, this prototypes for this stuff on Mars. Mars has looked into this, uh, and there hasn't been a whole lot of use of it inside the solar system because no one needs to get there that fast. But um, pressurizing chambers that big is impractical in space. That's the flaw you're seeing. They'd have, they'd have yeah. to do something weird. That or put everyone into pods um, for several decades, which is a whole mess of biology to pull off. Yeah, that's uh oh, that's interesting stuff there. Um, I'm I'm, I think intrigued to to do some very just quick you know corner of the napkin calculations. Does it seem like this would actually work? Because as I understand it, uh, they would have to basically develop like an entirely new uh, system in order to circulate liquid yeah. through a ship yeah. instead of air through a ship. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is kind of kind of intriguing, and and so uh, I'll, I'll kind of type up a quick couple of notes, right? Like, this seems impractical. This doesn't exist. This is probably also on uh, a uh, on a faith level. I don't know how they'd feel about uh, breathing liquid. Yeah, and that I'm not like... sure that may that, that may flag a religious uh, objection to. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of just type up my is notes. Is it caffeinated? Is it alcoholic? It's it's more that it's not so much that it's that they are some of the requests that kind of came through in the brochure for the what what the LDS wanted were like maintaining like kind of like idyllic lifestyles. So like, uh, I mean, they had like they wanted to grow food and teach people to grow food on the ship, so that way when they got to where they wanted to get, they could grow the food. Um, so the idea was to be self-sustaining, like like not have like self-sustaining machines necessarily, but have them do a lot of the labor as well, um, because they don't want to get there and have people that don't know how to build anything. But this solution with with the liquid oxygen would get around that because the people that would let left Earth would be alive when they got there. Ah. Uh. In theory. In theory, but um, sure. it creates <laughs> it's it's it is a uh, a lot of tech. Uh, going faster than the issue, keeping people alive going faster than the issue. And this is yeah. accelerating that, no pun intended. And we put a ping out to Fred and let him know that we are, yeah. we're, we've are we got this yeah. info and yeah. we're ready and Fred, for, for his and, team. Fred's got to shuttle wait and come back on the state onto the, the right. resorting time. Um, Because his, his his server room is empty. Uh, but, um, all right, so... Um, yeah, but the, the plan looks, it looks the decent. The server room is never completely empty. He's uh, always just a phone call <laughs> away. <laughs> the ghost of Fred Johnson. Um, there he is. Um, but yeah, Marv, you uh, you, got, you guys are kind of going with the plan. As, as you do, uh, the room opens up and in walks uh, Fred Johnson. Uh, Fred, you come in and you see the your crew now with like information of some presentation you've never seen before. 
going over the logistics of a plan and such. Um, and um, you guys all are, Fred just kind of walks in having, <clears throat> having paid for the room basically. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say good news and bad news, but it seems like a lot's already happened here. So good news, our cover's holding, at least for now. And bad news, you're going to give me bad news. Uh, not not actually necessarily bad news. Uh, these are the Batanka plans. Uh, the, the, the short version is uh, it relies on technology that has never been tested and doesn't exist as of this moment. So Also uh, breathing liquid for... Well, yeah, there is Quite the, the a small bit of, of breathing liquid oxygen for 20 some odd years, but you know, same difference. Not, a, uh, not an ideal situation for the lifestyle that, mm. that seems to be in the requests. But if this is viable technology, who else might want to buy it? Right, if they were to pump the resources in, is it going to become feasible? Mm-hmm. Psycho might pay a pretty penny for this info. Uh, the Valentine, you would know this off the bat, actually. Uh, they would have to go to outside companies and not be an all-in-one solution. Sure, that makes sense. Storyteller question. Yes, please. Is this the type of information that I would risk, like, transmitting, like, right now? Or is it the type of thing that, like, once we get back and we see Dawes again, maybe we hand him something in person? Get back. Okay. It, it, it's, not, it's not worth the risk right now at all, so. Okay. Um, and, and, and and Fred, as you saw on your on your t- tablet, there's like a, a there is a mixer tonight. Uh, it's actually going to happen in about like well, thirty minutes on the ballroom. Uh, any of you bring a pair of dancing shoes? I <laughs> show them the invitation yeah. to the mixer. Well, uh, I, I'm not going to dance, but I, I will attend if that's what you're asking. <laughs> Uh, just so you know, the room is bugged, uh, or we bugged the ballroom, right? That's what we've got. Yeah, you guys got like planted. a bug. You have a bug, uh, on we the We have a bug on Nico. We have a bug on the, the ballroom. Yeah, on the scientist, yeah. The scientist and the, the laptop connection. Yeah. Um, we're going to try and maybe, uh, bribe the, uh, Pope guard, uh, not guard, but the, someone who Nico was talking to who seems to be irked that Pope is not They were not already tipping. bribed. Cecilia already bribed them. Done. Cool. Yeah. Excellent work. Um, and uh, what am I forgetting? I think that's it. Oh, we've made friends oh, with sorry. with um, Yaniv? Yaniv. Yes. Yaniv. Yaniv. Sorry. Uh, I assume Yaniv you swept, is candles. I assume you swept this room for bugs because we yes. kind of got to assume that Yes. We're being listened to all the time. Oh. Um, do you guys, yeah. uh, yeah. do you guys just go in there? Do you, do you want to have Fred go separate? Do you want him to go with you or? I think it would be stronger. Cecilia is talking then. Uh, I feel like if Fred maybe led the charge, uh, if Fred, if you wanted to go in first and then that way afterwards we could go in and maybe get some more contextual clues from people because I just imagine that you will create quite a wave. I mean, you are quite the celebrity out here. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Um, Storyteller. Yes, please. Uh, Again, knowing my reputation, uh, do I think it would be two separate things, more or less advantageous to be seen with a fellow earther more or less advantageous to be seen with a belter mm. or both. both. Or Mar- Martian too. Martian, yeah. Uh, Martian, all yeah. Those, actually, all of them work. Showing that you're willing to work together is a really strong point. Uh, you are someone who has had, it's unclear if you renounced or had it revoked your Earth citizenship. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy. Um, depends who you ask. Uh, but everybody in that room would know who you are. And you could certainly... Um, that could, you could see that helping and hindering each person in your party. Cecilia, I think you're right, mm-hmm. but when I walk in the room, they're all gonna think they know something about me. They don't. Mm-hmm. But if I walk in the room with you all, then we put them into a point of having to figure out what's going on, and that's advantageous to us, especially if Tamsin can be monitoring their comms at the same time, assuming 
you'd rather not be in the room, of course. Uh, that, w- that was the plan, it was to be in everyone's ear. Hmm. Brad, I'll what? take your lead on this. Uh, the leader knows best. <laughs> I wish that were true, but uh, I think if all eyes are going to be on me, we can take advantage of that, especially because it might allow you all to move a little freer. Um, I assume none of this is going to be traced back to any of you. This pointing at the stolen data. <laughs> Actually, oh, no. actually, interesting enough, Tamsin, you get a ding off of Nico's little bug that you put on him. Your little AI comes up, and he goes, it basically says, uh, Ms. Maz, Ms. Masse, we, we understand your situation with Mal Quick, but simply put, um, these accusations seem legitimate, and we're really worried about having you uh, present with the other guests here, if, if that's the way that you're going to operate. And she's like, I never did any of that. You can hear, I never did any of that. That has nothing to do with me. Where's the yes. proof? It's just some computer thing. And he's like, listen, I'm sorry, but the hotel is, is worried about your presence here um, and everything. She's like, I can't go back empty handed. I, what, what? She's like, I'm gonna lose my job. And he's like, listen, I'm sorry, but this kind of work here at, at uh, our resort is unacceptable for our guest security. Um, please don't attend the ball tonight. Don't make a scene. Well, Mal clicks out tonight. <laughs> um, I, I will say this. I, I will say this for Tamsin. This is kind of an internal thing. It, it, it making a making a Earther to high incorporation loser job was kind of fun. So, it was a little, little oh, quirk, little it's quirk delightful. Of the a little quirk of the mission, yeah. It's it's a joy. Uh, two questions. Mm-hmm. One, did I hear that? You, do you want him to hear that, Tamsin? I, I'm happy to share that okay. information. Yeah. Two me being the observant tactician um now that i know her piece is off the board is there a potential opportunity to help leverage this lady to our side i'm always looking for earther allies and oh. now she she's oh, yeah. vulnerable oh yeah yeah she is in oh. she is uh this is an opportunity you that your opa operative from series has created for you um you, you put, put you put that little note in your in your you know little 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 tick mark on the positive elements for Tamsin. <laughs> I, I, I will say, kind of, when I realize that she's now vulnerable, I just look at Cecilia. I don't say anything. And I'm just sort of like, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> well, apparently, we're supposed to be there in just a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Anything else before we? Uh, make our grand entrance? Uh, I think uh, as of this point, um, uh, Hope Enterprises is the largest unknown in terms of what they are bringing to the table here. Uh, Assuming that all of the information that uh, we gathered has been shared with everybody, um, uh, they have something up their sleeve. Well, but also they, the most gregarious and social of the potential owners. And also the one that set this all up, so. Has uh, Cecilia's um, inside information on Pope gotten us anything? Mm. Uh, um, I mean, you, the one thing about this guy is he's been obsessed with going to, like going in further into space since he was a child. He was born to rich mm. parents. Uh, he, he was raised in London, educated in London. Um, and he, and I will not do a British accent, uh, but he um, uh, has always wanted to go further out. That's why he was been so in love with Titan coming out here. That's why he wanted to do it. I was also showing that, hey, well, I'm willing to go out this far. Why don't we go further kind of attitude? Um, but as far as his solution, I mean, the guy has access to ships, but he's got, no one's really sure exactly what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's ready to wow. And he's also much more secretive. But, also, don't, don't feel bad about your British accent. It's space British in the future. So he's Earth British. He's, 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 he's Earth, yeah, he's Earth raised, but yeah. It's future. Language changes over time. This is true. Who's to say what Earth accents will be like? Well, the problem is I, 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 uh, play, I played Pope in my other game, so I have to, <laughs> I have to kind of match the accent. <laughs> Continuity. Now <laughs> that that's an issue. But. Right, hey, that's still years from now. You sure? Yeah, you sure. sure? I mean, Madonna's accent changed like five times. 
<laughs> a theatrical, Man. secretive public face of a company to yeah. be doing strange and eccentric things. Um, uh, never who, what? That never happens. So, no. Quick question. Yeah. I know um, normally people don't walk around with like a very clear show of being armed or anything, but do I have any version of like a military dress outfit where it would make sense for me to have no, my sidearm or no? No, there's no, yeah. there's nothing like that. Uh, they don't have any weapons on here. Everybody's in check. So no one has, I would be clear, no one has guns on them. Um, right. And then there is, uh, you would, I mean, just kind of casual, like business casual. The way I would describe it is like, and especially without Fred dresses on the show, is like, you got some money, you go, you, you were able to go on a thousand dollar shopping spree before you went to Yosemite. <laughs> um, kind of outfit action going on. You know, you got your, you know, northern got your jacket on and stuff like that. The way you have on is actually very good and you kind of maybe sport that up a little bit. The jacket be nice. Look, it look great. I really yeah. like that. I'm sorry. That shirt. I'm jealous. P. Dave. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's clean. Okay. Um, uh, well, in that case, um, I won't make a big deal about anybody else trying to clean up or any such thing. I will just, uh, run through again, the cover story so that, um, in fact, why are we going to say that you all are with us in case so, anybody asks? You know, consultancy I'll, covers a lot yeah. of ground. And mm -hmm. I've already told, and I guess I will disclaim this now to Fred. So Fred, I've had a little conversation with Oksana, uh, and I told her that we are a small but earnest outfit and we're not expecting to win this contract, but we're here to throw our name into the ring just to start. I thought that would throw her off our trail a little bit that we're not a serious competitor, but we're just trying to, you know, go out there and just make more connections in general. So I think that also takes some pressure off of our lovely Dr. Marvin. So he doesn't have to also come up with technology. If we say we're, we're basically doing the same tech that everyone expects at this point. And I've shared that I'm, I'm here on a contract job, basically uh, speaking as to what is feasible given the, the state of technology out there, but not necessarily uh, you know, here to design anything new or groundbreaking. I'm the intern. <laughs> and with all luck, I won't ever have to show my face. All right, well, I think on that, we're gonna take another break here uh, and then we'll set up for the ballroom scene. I guess that's what it is. Um, I, real quick report, guys, we are at 1990. $1,990. Uh, I've up the goal uh. several times. Uh, we've blown through everything. Uh, Blandy McBlanderson, thank you for your donations. Thank you really, so much. Uh, this is, this thank is, you everybody so who's control. donating. This is, um, it's such an important cause. And uh, yeah, I am, I'm, 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 thankful i'm shocked i'm happy uh and i have a lot of fun so and hopefully all you are home do that uh we're gonna take a hey welcome back to dappa's fate everyone we're having a blast over here honestly that was uh that was a great break actually and uh once again everyone <laughs> thank you uh we're ten dollars short of 2k um it's amazing out of control y'all are, are like just monstrous attacking this goal these goals and doing it. For anyone joining us, we're playing for World Central Kitchen, which is an amazing organization that goes into disaster zones, post-emergency, and just feeds people. Cuts through the red tape, gets in there, and takes care of people. And it's a phenomenal organization. There's a documentary, if you want to watch it, on Disney Plus called We Feed People, um, directed by Ron Howard, and you will cry and have hope for humanity. Um, and it's yeah. also John's birthday. And it is my birthday. Yeah, this is appreciated. I, I deeply appreciate all this and uh, the like. So, but yeah, we are uh, we are making our way to our goal and accelerating. Speaking of accelerating, there's B Dave got something to say. Uh, not to put you on the spot, if you still remember how to do it, I know Jen took the time to figure out how to say happy birthday in Belter, and I super can't do it. So <laughs> I did oh, it off camera it. before. So yeah, let's, let's... ten ten ye wa die bereth hush. Push. Push means happy. <laughs> it, it, is a, it is a fun language, actually. There's a lot of there's a lot of interesting words. I, my my favorite one is the um. I, I think I told Jen it. It's, I can't remember how to say it, but it's like uh, you call you call him a crooked dick man, and it, it's it, it basically saying like if you're gonna fuck me, fuck me straight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. like, it's like gee, yeah. I really res I respect the directness of it. Um, my favorite yeah. is the word for delicious, which is bekadabush. Oh, you should have told me. I, my, I have a shirt that says bekadabush on it. 
Do you? Yeah. It's such a good so, word. It's so word. fun to say. Yeah, it's got. But it's yeah, got a, you, me, memories has it. M e m, -M r i s e. You could take a class. It's what I did all night, which is why I'm saying words and feeling very proud of myself. John, you should you should have all of us uh, sign something like a T-shirt and auction that off too. There you okay. go. I'll look into it. Goldies, I got I got, I got some average Christmas it. shirts and, and some stuff. Oh yeah, some stuff we have here. giveaways too. We and we do have a giveaway. Yeah, I, I giveaway. Yeah, I gotta mention that too. So our, our buddy at Dragonburn has donated uh kindly enough a Vorpal Sword wood dice box and a hex cat dice catapult. So it place a story of ammunition in to use it, apparently. Um, if you type the word Abaraxis into the chat, uh, you can go ahead and enter. And we have quite a few entries already. So awesome, awesome time, everyone. I appreciate it. But it's still time to do that. We will be uh, pulling a name at the end of the stream. All right. Ballroom's there. You're approaching it. Um, real quick, who do I want to have? Um, as you approach the ballroom, uh, you can see um, people are kind of uh, coming and going. There's like wait staff. There's a, the mixer going on. Probably, you can hear it's a pretty good crowd in there. Probably not packed, but probably like 50 some odd people inside the uh, the ballroom and such. Um, as you approach it, though, you do see um, a, uh, a pair of people come out of the room, well dressed and they are at the, the kind of the back wall to kind of get off from the main area and they are arguing uh, it looks like two men um and they're arguing they're not like like throwing fist of cuffs but like they're like bickering at each other and you can kind of see wait staff is kind of looking at them like should they intervene but uh you guys are now approaching the room here and you can uh hear the crowds going on it doesn't seem like there's a commotion inside the room like like people are like there's a scene but whoever these guys are they seem to have some sort of issue with each other so I'm going to use my special talent, which is to literally meddle. Um, meddle. And I, I want to get in between and I want to resolve this so they like us, whoever they are. Whoever they are. I don't care who they are. I just want I them to like us. I don't care who they are. I want them to like us. OK. Um, all right. So uh, Goldie, you, you kind of see this too. And you go, you know, how did you do that? You didn't tell me. I mean, there, it's like some miscommunications going on. It's dramatic. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, they're a uh, hey, private conversation, lady. Like, well, you know, that's what they say to you when, when you come up. Okay, to of course. And I go, of course, this is a private conversation, but we're in a very public venue. And I want to make sure that there's not some sort of miscommunication that's happening right now. In fact, I want to say that while we may not all be friends here right now, there's a potential that we could all be friendly later, right? But one of them looks at you and he's like, what? And he's like, he's like, fuck this. And he, like, he, he goes, yeah. this fucking RC, this RCAE piece of shit. Does it, one's going to listen to what we're doing. We're trying to tell him how to run this project. You cost us it, man. You know, he's like, I'll see you later, Douglas. And he like fucks off down the, the guy just like, like starts walking out the hall, starting off. And like, this guy, Douglas is like, the hell, man. And Douglas, you can see has on his thing, uh, the initials RCE. Which you recognize mm -hmm. the same for Royal Charter Energy. So he's part of that team, mm -hmm. that that combo thing, and he's just like, fuck. He's just like, he's exasperated. And I'm gonna just keep talking to Douglas because now I'm here and now I've interrupted their fight. So okay. yeah. Uh, um yeah. give me a give me a, a social check of your choice. Uh you can do deception if you wanna do you wanna pretend to care about him or something. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm pretending to care right now. Okay. Give me a uh, give me a deception check. Uh, so three six plus six and uh, yeah, okay. you can re-roll so this got... too. Okay, good. I'm gonna. Can I re-roll one? You can re-roll re the whole the whole thing. <sighs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna re-roll this because I'm not even gonna say what I got, but That's it's okay. very bad. <laughs> All right. Woo. Okay. So I got a. Let's see. I got a four and a four at least, mm -hmm. and then a six. Ooh, very nice. Very high, yeah, on the drama die. Yeah. Um, you use the metal feet, and uh, do you want to make this guy feel better about the other guy, or do you want to make him feel worse? <laughs> Whatever is going to get him over to my side, and I feel like, let's make him feel a little worse. Okay. So uh, you take some moments with him, and you kind of, you know, hey, what's going on, buddy? And he, he basically goes, he's like, look, he's like, these... These guys from freaking uh, Star Works or whatever the hell they call themselves, this supposed to be a Star Works, they, they don't get the nuances of, of what we're doing at, at our World Charter Energy. I just, yeah, work with them, man. They're just a bunch of techno babble guys. They don't understand the humanity we need to bring to the project. 
absolutely understand that. You know, sometimes when we can't work well with others, it means maybe we should be working with someone different. You know, hi, I, I'm sorry, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Cecilia, it's yeah, lovely to meet you. Yeah, Douglas Pendle, uh, Royal Charter Energy. Uh, yeah, are you here with like one of the corps or who are you here with? Yeah, I'm here with a, I'm here with a smaller group. We're called SCH now. Oh. I don't know that we're gonna get this contract. So for me, I'm I'm really just trying to make new connections and, and meet new people and try to just make some friends. Well, shit, I'm, I'm there with you. I, I don't think, yeah, I think making some friends is about the best you can do. Well, I'm, look, th thanks for stepping in. I This this asshole, I can't believe I gotta fly back with him. Oh. I think it's been two months with that guy on a ship. Jesus. Oh. oh, that's the worst. You know, one time I was on a ship with somebody uh, I'm not going to say who, and and it was just really bad. I mean, just they were the worst person you could possibly imagine. So you're doing a great job, and you know anything that you need, just yeah. ask me, Cecilia. I'll help you I, out. I appreciate it. Well, look, I'm I'm going to go back to my room, take a take a quick shower, and then maybe go hit the bar. I I don't think I don't have to worry about the optics of drinking now that freaking we're done. So, uh, <sighs> shit. All right. All right, and do I have a do I have a bug from Tamsin who I'm going to assume just gave me a hand yeah, of bugs? Oh yeah, yeah. Like can, popcorn can I, in your pocket. Can, can I slip that's, that's a bug? That's a logical thing. But. I'm going to slip a bug to this person right. if uh, possible. Uh, how do you do? Do you want to like just like pat him on the back or something like that? Yeah, I'm going to okay. pat him on the right. back. Give me I'm give gonna... me a dexterity check as you try to like slide a hand this into his person's. So there's just uh, okay, great. So seven plus six. Oh, 13 plus two. Okay, so yeah. yeah, yeah, you go up and you you kind of slide it into like his lapel real quick, and yeah. it sticks. And he, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, oh, thanks for listening to me. It's nice to, nice someone here listens to me. And he like goes, he goes off to his room. Um, Fred, you kind of watch this happen, uh, and you see uh, Cecilia doing some, I guess we'll call it crowd work, uh, <laughs> is a way to put it. Um, but the, the door is open and the, the wait staff is there and they uh, you can go and just flick, flick over your details and they'll they'll let you in no problem. They have balancers too, I should add, so. When I walk in, um, uh, especially with uh, Dr. Marvin and Esther, I sort of walk about six feet into the room and mm -hmm. just kind of stop mm -hmm. because I'm really looking to see who's gonna respond to the fact that I'm there. Like just kind of gauging oh. their looks. Oh. <laughs> yeah. As you do, a yeah. portion of the crowd actually that you're looking onto in a very almost cinematic way splits open, and a man is standing there with a with a uh, a, a mocktail that's um, you can't help but notice matches his outfit. Uh, and uh, he stands there and he, and he he shakes his head, takes his drink, and he's just kind of he kind of gestures towards you, and he's just like looking at all the people like. Unbelievable, it's unbelievable. Uh, you identify this man as Sebastian Pope. I was about to say, is that Sebastian Pope? Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, uh, he, unbelievable good or unbelievable bad? Just like, <laughs> because I was about to say unbelievable is, could mean a lot. You know, um, I can't believe this is my life tonight. <laughs> is that a fair one? I, I just kind of say quietly to Dr. Mm -hmm. Marvin and Esther, looks like we're on and I walk straight towards him. And he walks up to you, and he he goes. He's doing the hand extension. He's got the drink in one hand, that hand extension. Mm -hmm. and says, uh, Frederick Johnson, I uh, absolute pleasure to meet you, sir. Sebastian Pope, the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> Fred Johnson knows my name. This is a mind-boggling day for me. Uh, what what brings you all the way out to Titan here? I, I, you're on the list. Who are you working with? Uh, small. Uh... But fearsome consortium, uh, SCH, uh, we're, we're going by here. SCH, um, I'll be sure to mm. keep an eye out for that. Um, I mean, are, are you on are you owner, staff, consultant? What's the, what are you doing for them? Yes. I love it, I love <laughs> it. Um, this is my associate, Dr. Marvin DeValentine. DeValentine, uh, I've heard some words about you and your work on Mars. Good to meet you. Go shake your hand, Marv. Great to meet you too. I uh, hope you've only heard the good stuff. <laughs> Give him like a playful wink. All right. <laughs> and also uh, Esther Harper. Oh, Esther, he's like, it's kind of meet you. Uh, not familiar with your work, but uh, what brings out uh, such a lovely young lady all the way out to Titan? Oh, I'm the intern, sir. 
Uh, hold on, so opportunities, opportunities knock, you must take them. I can tell you right now, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Johnson here has said the same exact thing, correct? Many times, sir. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> this is fantastic. I stay, hang on, don't try and recruit our star player, though. <laughs> not, not, not just yet, Mr. Pope here. Um, this is quite... Um, quite a to-do you've oh. put on here you've oh well and he and he kind of looks over and he says absolutely he points over to a direction do you want to take your attention to that direction real quick as he kind of gestures out that way i mean uh again i am observant so i oh. sort of keep an eye yeah, on he, he look, look at, sir, he, a little bit of i don't give him this thing you know? yeah there, there's people that are <laughs> yeah no the, he he's kind of he's kind of directing to look the same direction as him like kind of side by mm-hmm. side and um there's like people with like photography gear, like little drone photography gear, like taking photos um, of the two of you kind of next to each other. He wants to be seen. Mm. I'm not going to have you roll. It is so obvious. Interesting that he wants to be seen with me. Huh. Um, To tell you that, believe it or not, I actually kind of try and rotate a little bit where Cecilia won't be in the background of the picture. Oh, so she's kind of, kind of coming in the back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of this way. I wanted to ask about Tamsin. Tamsin, do you want to... Um, so you do figure out there actually are cameras in the room. There's like drones. Those are something that you could... If you want to try to be um, remote, you could do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right. uh, Anything I can tap into uh, from from the room. These are pretty... These are pretty uh, they're pretty standard drones and you're... Taking control of them would be a problem, but observing them and listening in isn't a problem. That's all um, I need. Okay. And figuring out where um, the areas where I might not have access would be oh. um, so I can fill in everybody on the ground. And you can hear so can... you can hear everyone's calm, so they're, everyone's linked in, so we're all uh, we're good so, there. Since this is a charity game, and uh, it's time to take some big swings here. So, <laughs> um, uh, start using some of those rerolls. <clears throat> you guys got like, yeah, you guys got like a uh, uh, I think six of them right now. I have two. Uh, hey, so. While we're sort of taking these pictures, um, I just sort of lean in to Mr. Pope and I say, um, I realize this is uh, this is the show for the cameras, but at some point I would like to talk some real business. Oh, absolutely. As he smiles saying this to you. Um, and he says it loud enough that everyone can hear him say absolutely. Uh, yeah, he, he knows he's playing the game and he's completely mm-hmm. willing to, to pull the show. He's like, he's like, no, he's like, you're a man that's been around. You, you've you seen things that many of us, I mean, we have seen some of the things you've done by all means. And yeah, I've seen some things that no one else should. Yeah. But Absolutely. that's not why we're here today. No, it's not. But you, you're a man that demonstrates leadership. You're a man that demonstrates vision and bold moves. I got to say, I mean, is it, I, I look, I, I'm not. I'm not one to really go into the tabloids and the rumor mill. But I mean, is it true that you're uh, kind of a player on Sirius Station now? I've become a voice for some people that would otherwise be voiceless. <laughs> An advocate, because uh, as you can see, um, I do garner some attention and uh, conversations with important uh-huh. people. The, the Belters are, are, are amongst some of our, our best. I mean, they, the, what they do is, I mean, it's brave. I, I, I admire it. Um, they, they do so much, and, and I'm, I'm glad that people like you are seeing that and, uh, you know, appreciating I'm, that and making sure I'm that... I'm glad that people like you are seeing and appreciating <laughs> that. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Where could I find one? I pointed his mocktail. I'm like, I don't know oh. that it matches my outfit quite as well. There, but there is a, there, there's an absolute bar over there. Whatever color you want, trust me, they'll, they'll make it work for you, uh, my friend. Uh, Colonel Johnson, uh, a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. Don't, don't be a stranger. I, my, my admin assistant's over there. Set up a meeting, and I'll get my people talking to people. And perhaps before we leave Titan, we can uh, have a little one-on-one, maybe, huh? I would definitely like that. Oh, so amazing, amazing. And he kind of walks uh, off. Mm-hmm. You sort of uh, look look at Marv and Esther, and I'm like, hmm, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to let Esther do an empathy check, <laughs> and I'm going to let Marv whatever check you think is appropriate. Yay. 
Yeah, I don't know that I have great insight into people or uh, <laughs> anything that doesn't have gears and he's like, wires. Well, he's like, technically, a, a human body is moving parts, so that is engineering, correct? Uh, uh, <laughs> in the most technical of senses, I, I think, honestly, um, uh, m during this time, Marv h h is just keeping uh, an eye out on everything else in the room to see what other reactions are happening, uh, and and I'll just do a, a general perception for anything else of, of of interest. People, people in the room are trying; they're trying not to give him his attention, but at the same time, he does kind of create spectacle. Right, right. So he forces the attention. Um, he's made himself visible. I will That's just say what while we're resolving these things, I, I do just kind of call out to Tams and I'm like, just keep an eye on the comms now that uh, all eyes are on us. Never stop. Uh, yeah. Esther, what'd you got on empathy? Uh, 13 with a double. Uh, hey. what, was your, what was your lowest number? Lowest number was a one. Uh, can you bump that up to, spend four fortune and bump that to a four? Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, you bump it up and uh, you get the read on Pope. Uh, Hope thinks he has this thing one. He hasn't even done the presentation yet, and he thinks it's one. He knows it's one. So Esther knows what I know. He he's he's on a victory lap. Yeah, he's his confidence is up theme. Good point. Um, Tamsin, you keep an eye on the room, and um, yeah, I mean, everyone's just kind of talking about it. They're mixing. Some people are old old colleagues from college. Some people are like you know they've worked together on different projects in the past. Um, almost, you do get uh, a few mentions of like, oh, the pompous ass. Like, you get a few people aren't happy about it. Why is he doing all this? What's the point of him doing all this? You know, the best project will win. How do you think he has the best project? Stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, is that from his own team at all? Um, his own team tell? is very much you get a little bit of response from them and a little bit of vocals and a lot of it's saying like they're coordinating how to engineer to make him look good. Mm. Like it's all him. He has a team making him look good while he uh, does his thing. It's it's very um, contrived, I think would be the appropriate okay. word here. Can I, I, I guess I'm separate from everyone well, else. You, you kind of came in late. Yeah, you came in late. Yeah, so and I, I got into the middle of the fight. Uh, <laughs> can I possibly just separately then talk to the Pope team? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Pope team's there. Uh, he does have, uh, when you come up, uh, two of them appear to be kind of scientists, uh, and they're, uh, you kind of quickly catch that they're the scientists. The other yeah. one, though, looks like uh, more of a manager type. And then there is like, there's a, and each one has their own personal assistant. There's like four personal assistants on the Pope team. Um, so as you approach, one of them goes, uh, oh, hello. And they kind of he walks like right in front of you as you approach the group and says, oh, hello. Right. Hi, um, I'm Meredith. Uh, I'm one of the assistants on the Pope team. Um, who are you? Hi, Meredith. Uh, I'm Cecilia. Oh, I, it's a lovely I, name. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you may have heard of our group. We're a little bit small, but we're doing really interesting things oh, right now. Uh, and so to be totally honest, Meredith, we don't have a chance at winning this contract, <laughs> but I mean, I was hoping that I could talk to some of the great people on the Pope team because mm. I know, I just know that you are doing amazing things. And so it never hurts to, you mm, know, mm, make well, new friends, right? Absolutely. Well, if you would like to hit, we have our uh, head of logistics here, our, our lead of the logistics department here, uh, Sinopa Goodtrail, if you'd like to speak to her. I'd absolutely love to talk to Sonova. Uh, uh, Miss Goodtrail, and the, this woman comes over and she's got this like very nice dress, um, clearly brought from earth, earth made, mm -hmm. handmade, uh, upscale, um, has what you, you don't know what it is in her hair. She has something weird, it has kind of like, um, it looks kind of furry, but it's not furry, not really sure what it is. Uh, Esther, you would know this as a, as a feather. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, Witchcraft. It, yeah, it's bizarre stuff, guys. Uh, yeah, uh, and um, but yeah, she kind of comes up and, and she goes, <laughs> "Good." She's like Sonopa Good Trail, uh, and she says, uh, looks over the data. Cecilia with S C H. I'm not familiar with your company. Oh well, we're very small, 
and we are <laughs> just starting out and she so laughs. you know it, it of course so we don't expect to do any of the big work that any of the major players we, here are doing uh, uh, but a big <laughs> splash i mean you you walk in with a butcher of anderson station oh my well, god goodness i I haven't heard that name in quite a while, and I've I've honestly almost forgotten about that. Uh, to all of us, he's a Fred. He's a lovely consultant. We don't know him too well, mm -hmm. I would say, right. but we all have enjoyed working with him. Hamza had something to chime in with. Yeah, I wanted to. While this is happening, I'd like to uh, basically Google Sonopa okay. and and kind yeah. of. But go as deep as I can. Okay. Find whatever uh, I can about going, her. Going deep is going to take you like two hours because you have to go light delay back to Earth. Um, but you can get like some basic like what's in like the news about her really easily. Okay. Um, she is, she's a lead logistics. She's kind of a hot shot. Uh, she is an Earther. Um, she does have uh, indigenous uh, uh, roots in North America. Um, it's kind of her in the, the North American shared interest zone. That's what they call it in the expanse. Uh, it's the most generic name ever. <laughs> um, but she is, um, and she's been brought up through Pope, and uh, she's had a, probably a star rise. Uh, seems to know how to get things done from point A to point B. And that's why, like, in, in the interviews, you've, you've, you kind of sift through, Pope likes that. He likes that she's direct, she gets results, and uh, that end game is what, what matters to her. And I, I overcome, will say, Cecilia, if you can get her out of the game, he's going to struggle. Mm. Yeah. And I and I uh, just, you know, do an imperceptible nod because I've now received mm. this message mm. and now it is time for me to F with Sinopa. <laughs> so now I will do once again what I do best. I'm just going to throw some doubt, I think, as right. Cecilia. Ow. So I want to just, I want to now maybe say that, oh, I've been talking a little bit because I've done the rounds. So I've talked with Butenko, I've mm -hmm. talked with Tycho. Um, so while we're not, of course, you know, my little outfit, we're not anything to be worried about, but some of these other people, oh, Sinopa, I just think as, as we're now quite friendly, I just want you to know that you should be a little worried about what Tycho and, and Butenko are doing, I only because we're so friendly now and I, I don't want to hide anything from you. I think it's really important that whatever Pope is doing, which I'm sure is amazing, just be, uh, there might be some other serious contenders, some backdoor deals that are happening. Mm. And of course, you know, be careful, um, but, I think that some people are maybe not saying everything they should be saying, which is such a shame because you're clearly such an accomplished, amazing woman who can handle it. I throw you the really. name of a company, uh, like a company that might want to give her a, a bid, a no. career bump. Yes. Okay. What would that company be? Uh, well, uh, I hear there's gonna be an opening at Mal Quick soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then Cecilia, you know, puts her her hand. You, you, on you the could drop that the Victoria Massey, the the Mal Quick yes. representative, okay. is being fired, and the, so that's a big pay raise. So I'm gonna lean in really close yep. and say, I I really shouldn't even be telling you this, but I just heard that Victoria Mass uh, at Mal Quick, she might be let go very soon, and you know, you know how many. How much give me, money? give me a deception check. Deception check. Okay. And you're gonna, is there uh, anything I can give her to help? Um, you actually lowered her target number. Sweet. Like, so yes, yeah, she helped her out. Yeah. Okay, we got a five, a four, and a three. Okay. So plus, that's a, plus your bonus. Plus your bonus. Yeah, so plus 12, my bonus. Plus six, so it's eighteen. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, what was your drama die number? What my drama number? five. Five, awesome. If you can push that, so you spend, I'm gonna have you spend four fortune to push that three to a four Absolutely. and that'll give you the thing. Let's um, do it. You can use the stunt called oozing confidence. And <laughs> oh, you, <right. laughs> you now get, you now have a reputation of being an insider in this industry with this person. So hey. for, this, for this whole session, 
um, with uh, Sinopa Goodtrail, you are an insider. Uh, she trusts you to have the, the good information. Sinopa, this is absolutely a secret. Mal, and Mal, I Mal, really shouldn't say? even. She, she, I, she, I, the whole, she's like, hold on. She says, um, Meredith, uh, why don't go get me a drink real quick if you would. Um, and she's clearly dismissing the. And that's like, oh, okay, real Mal quick? Yeah, Mal quick. Yeah, a little Mal quick. <laughs> Um, Meredith quick, yeah, so, but yeah, you, um, she's like, like, uh, yeah, we noticed that, uh, I noticed that Victoria came alone. Um, I'm unclear if she's hard to work with or if, um, she's no longer welcome or Mal Quick maybe even came empty handed. I think it was a combination of all those things. They came mm -hmm. empty handed and perhaps her bosses are a little unhappy with her. I, I heard there was a little scuffle. Um, that happened earlier, and I I don't know the All details. Oh, that scene between now, the, uh, the RCE folks, jeez. Oh gosh, but yes, and, and there was that, and, and I think Victoria is on the way out, but you, you Snowba, you could be on the way in. Well, Malquick does have a hell of a retirement plan, I will say that. And the, their logistics department always needs more uh, logistics. Uh, <laughs> I, something to keep it, I'll keep an eye out for that, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk. And let me know, Snopa, if you need anything at all. I am mm. here to help. Excellent. And Cecilia, right? Where, where, where do you and uh, where is SCH based out of? And it's officially oh. it's based out of Luna. Okay. So <laughs> we're based out of Luna. But once again, I personally, I'm I'm a little bit of a floater. <laughs> Uh, I can understand. I just they gets... start creating other locations for Cecilia okay. so that she has covers. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, not a problem. You start planting those over on, on different locations where she drops. Okay. So yeah, so Sonopa is now kind of, um, we'll say she's not going to not do the job, but she is going to um, definitely consider the options as opposed to being so focused. Okay. Um, Back to uh, Fred, Marv, and Esther. As you, as you stand there, um, you get approached by um, a person. Actually, Fred, you recognize this man. Um, he's a little older. He's probably like in his like uh, late sixties. Kind of surprised he made the trip out here. And uh, you recognize this man as Brendan Tycho, the owner of Tycho Corporation. And he says, "Colonel Johnson, it's a hell of a thing to see you out here." Um, I know I've dealt a lot with earthers, but mm -hmm. I mean, I know this guy, but I mean, am I happy to see him? <laughs> I mean, he's the guy you want to get the, you want to have him get the bid. You want him to win it. Right. Um, right. He, he's got a reputation as just being like science first. We're going to make this thing work. Give us a challenge. We'll our, my, my grandfather, my father, we all stepped up for the challenge um, and everything. He's like, I hear you've been uh, lurking around some of the old Tycho works on series station. How, how is the old station these days? Better than ever, but still plenty of room to improve. Absolutely. Oh, there always is room to improve, huh? That's a hell of a thing these uh, Latter-day Saints are asking us to do. Have you, have you read the, the technical documentation of it? I've sort of relied on Dr. Marvin's translations of oh. it, really. Dr. Marvin uh, DeValentine. De Valentine, yeah, just go shake your hand. This, this man's yeah. like a, a titan of industry for you. I mean, you you had posters of him up on your wall as a kid. Um, <laughs> hmm. So, yeah, he's a... Uh, well, Oh, sorry. Hey, hey, hey! Uh, great, great to meet you. I uh, heard heard phenomenal things about, uh, of course, uh, everything that the Taiku's been doing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, be be curious to hear what uh, you're you're bringing to the table. Uh, oh, I mean, offer. you know, uh, we're trying to we're trying to conform to the cultural demands of of the LDS Church, and uh, we think we have a good solution with a generational ship. Um, but I've. Uh, the number of people they want to bring is a lot of life support systems, a lot of uh, food, uh, air, all that stuff. I mean, having it on something like Siri Station, which can be resupplied, is one thing, but having it go out for a hundred years is another thing. Um, but we, we we got some we got some stuff in the in the tube, and uh, if they, you know, if they have the money, uh, we have the thing. We have the we have Tyco Station ready to build it. But uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a little. A little hint here. He can tell that you're kind of excited, excited about the technology stuff he's talking. He's like, "What if I told you what we have could, I don't know, overshadow the size of your Donager class ships?" 
I mean, that's certainly uh, that's impressive uh, to say the uh, least. Uh, Putting something that big in 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 space is, I mean, is the huge. The Donager is what half a kilometer long, something like that, three quarters of a kilometer uh, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our ship will. Uh, I believe we could. As it goes over, he talks about. Well, I think we could fit four of those into ours. Only four. Well, that's uh, no small feat. For those that are not familiar, the Donager is like the big class of ship that the Martians have. It's terrifying. Um, it can create a thousand kilometer no fly zone around itself full of bullets. So, um, this is so he's just saying, Yeah, we could we we're gonna be bigger than that thing. Um, he's like, Yeah, I'm not trying to brag, but I think that that's what they need. Um, they're they want open spaces, and uh, I put this, we're gonna give it to them. Well, hmm. that's uh, that's an impressive feat, you know. If you're interested, uh, in, in trying to figure out some of the power. Uh, situations you got there. I'd recommend you actually talk to my mentor over. Uh, I, I can give you uh, her, her contact information. Uh, Doctor Boo. Uh, oh, Doctor uh, Boo. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. University of Mars. Oh, yeah. Boo's work uh, has certainly informed some some of ours, and it's always the coalition between Earth and Earth and Mars has certainly benefited us all. But yeah, our ship. Um, I don't think even your Callisto yards could handle it. That's why we're going to try to we're going to we're showing off an upgrading Tycho station as we speak. Yeah, well, I'm just saying uh, some of her work, I think, would probably it was it was uh, foundational for what I was doing. And I think it would uh, perhaps uh, at the very least, uh, if you wanted to reach out to her, I, I'd be happy to put in a word and see if she couldn't help with uh, some of that stuff. And are you on permanent with uh, this SCH company? And I mean... uh, not, not permanent by any means. Uh, this is kind of a, a contract uh, job for the time being. But uh, I, I, to be clear, I think there is a future. Uh, it's just kind of dependent on, on uh, whether or not we land this particular. Well, let, uh, let me do this. Yeah. I'm gonna. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Colonel Johnson. To, to not trying to poach your people here. What, what you're doing. Uh, it's that definitely is what it sounds like. But well, I want to. I want to make sure he has an opportunity in the future because that's our goal here. Is a right, John, boss man. <laughs> it's probably an opportunity here in the future for all for all these uh, all the belters and the people that want to come out and work and make the it's, best and brightest. Um, I do think what you describe would mean quite a lot of opportunities for the belters. Actually, because I mean, that would be quite an undertaking to build a ship well, four times larger. Our, our projections right now on our on our job it would be completed in about we're aiming for eight years. But honestly, uh, probably talk, take closer, maybe up to 12, depending on the complexities. We're still developing a few things. We got this great new air scrubber situation. We have this um, uh, new substance uh, to scrub the CO2 out of the air. It's like a super uh, amine that we're using, but uh, I don't want to get into all the chemistry and all that kind of stuff with y'all, but um, we're hoping to make it sustainable. And, the, uh, and we're actually, um, we're hoping to, uh, by the LDS, the capability to bring uh, livestock with them along. Now that would be huge in terms I of mean, sustainability. I mean, I, I, the odd, you know, we can. I mean, I'm certainly. I'm sure we could probably count on our hands the number of burgers that have been eaten past Saturday. You know, um, these people will will crush that number. Um, so yeah, that's what we're. That's our goal, and uh, we're, it's, it's ambitious. But I mean, spin up the series station was was ambitious. It just sort of a uh, look kind of to, to the left and right. And I just kind of lean a little closer to him and I say, is there anything I can do in particular that might help well, what's your, what's bring your, this vision to reality for you? I mean, what's your contract look like with SCH? Are you, are you a free agent? Are you a owner or how, how's that working? Because the last I heard you were, you were negotiating union contracts. So is that, did they bring in the big gun here? He says, did they bring in the big gun? He kind of looks at you and kind of realizes that that's kind of a shitty term of phrase to use with this person. And I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. I didn't mean anything by that. I didn't mean anything by that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Uh, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Just... They, they brought they brought in a big flash. I mean, Sebastian Pope, I, mean, I saw you talking to the man, and it's, not, well, <laughs> it's no fun task. But now I'm talking to you, sir. And uh, my intent, my hope, is to bring uh, the most opportunity out to the belters, whatever that looks like. <laughs> sounds sounds great. Um, well, I think that's what we're gonna we're gonna, we're aiming to do. But uh, if this solution of Pope's that he's going on about is so am ambitious, I'd uh, I'm not sure if we can compete. I was remiss here to uh, I didn't introduce you to oh. uh, Esther. There here. is an empty space where <laughs> Esther was. Where did Esther go? Um, are the, the LDS... shortest, so yeah, she could get away. Yeah. <laughs> are, are the LDS here? 
Yeah, they actually just started walking in. Um, you see these people, everyone's shaking hands with them. Um, it's three men and two women. Uh, mm -hmm. The men are all kind of in a standard dress, uh, kind of uniform thing like that. They've all dressed up nicely for the event, um, but they're all clearly identifiable in LDS kind of like traditional garb. Uh, it is it is yeah. a, a, a gala they're trying to they're trying to show off and they're being hosted by it, um, and there are various ages and stuff like too. And one of them though is uh, there's only one of them that's carrying a data pad, and actually one of them's not about your age actually. Mm -hmm. What are the younger uh, people you've seen here? Now, and are they still a group or are they breaking off? I'm um, just probably breaking off, and, and Pope went over to get pictures with them and everything like that too. But he's he he kind of made sure to spearhead that to get the he knew they were coming in before they came in, and he got the photos real quick. And now he's kind of sauntered off with uh, one of them at least. Uh, you're guessing the uh, the high priest, the, the top ranked person. But you do see that there's uh, two other uh, men and two other women standing there just kind of uh, talking to people and everything's kind of going on. And the Botankos are trying to make it a move and such. Yeah, uh, somebody can clip this. Fuck them dudes, I'm heading to the women. Okay, all right. So you come up, uh, one of them is like 45, the other one's about your age, 24. Uh, and I will... Um... It, I will not say age before beauty, but I will think that. Um, and I will go with deference mm -hmm. to the elder and make greetings. Okay, she goes, if I can oh. swing and grab the least offensive possible drinks on my oh, way. Oh yeah, over, it's I all non-alcoholic. So. Yeah, you, you get like a nice little punch or something like that. And they, uh, uh, they come, you come up and they go, uh, oh, hello. Um, how are you May tonight? I please make the Book of Mormon joke, please? You can't, I don't know what that is, but please. <laughs> it's just ding dong. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you ring the you ring the bell and they they answer. Um, yeah, they stand there and they. Uh, uh, she goes. Uh, yes. Uh, hello. Uh, who who are uh, uh, Sylvie Debo? And this is our uh, missionary uh, uh, out out in the belt, uh, Anna Bragenholm. Um, yes. 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 I'm I'm Esther. I'm oh, S C H. I'm I'm similar uh to kind of I, i'm the intern uh, oh so is so is anna anna's actually out on uh in currently finishing up her uh medical doctorate back on earth oh fabulous that's so wonderful um uh it's it's so wonderful to see earthers all the way out here it's so nice mm, to see mm. a familiar f signs of home uh, Absolutely. That, that's actually been one of the, the major concerns is looking at how do we ensure that our people get to where they're going and also ensure they bring with them their um, how they function, how they how they live. I'm, I'm so curious as to what home I'm I, I, I'm an anthropology graduate oh, student, oh. so I think about people and and communities so mm, much. Mm. And it's so fascinating to, to talk to different people about what home means to them. And um, this is this is me trying to get some information through interviewing. Okay. Uh, if it's socially kind yeah, give me, of give me an investigation way. check real quick and I'll let you kind of see what you get out of them because uh, they're actually more uh, willing to talk about stuff okay can I use my expertise in interviewing yes, to you get can. a plus one thank you um, that is um, a uh, 12 12 okay uh, you have we have some free you, we do have some free rerolls if you want to use them. I would love a free reroll, please, mm -hmm. and thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. and, here, and here's where Emily blows through all all our rerolls. You will, um, but good through, people watching, yeah, you can I'm, give us more rerolls. We'll blow through two um, of the rerolls one night. One there's one still night. time. Seventeen. Oh, that's great. Okay, so yeah, she she goes. Oh, um, well, we're interested in bringing um the the style that that we have the way we've uh, constructed our temples uh, to the ship's design uh, we're interested in having making sure that the next generation that does get there doesn't forget where they came from so we would like to have murals and the and the like not just vid screens you know um, there's oh, something personal about that that handmade the human touch the human touch exactly because what's the point of us going out to another star if we don't bring our humanity with us. I immediately begin relaying this to uh, everyone who was, I guess it was, it was Fred who was talking yeah. to Tycho, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, and it's Cecilia been... was talking to, oh, Cecilia had the assistant. Or, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, uh, but, yeah Fred. Been, yeah, it's been so interesting to talk to people about their ideas about these kinds of generationships and things like that. And, and I know that some folks have talked about, you know, how they feel about 
cryo options and other kinds of options that you are, know are you with uh pope enterprises this is the, oh, no. this, this is their missionary say no oh no no uh, this is this is something that comes up in my my research program oh okay well i'm, I'm sorry you're talking about cryogenics and we immediately think of pope's uh projects here oh oh i see no 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 this is just uh uh, I know that one uh, that you know. There's lots of different technical solutions to these problems, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm curious about what the community thinks about the different. Um, well, uh, generational ship is is, is, an, is a solution in terms of us sharing our culture, and we would be able to continue inst instruction, teaching children, schools, missions, uh, farm life, all that kind of stuff. Potentially, if we can get that to go in a ship, cryogenics though would allow our people to simply go to sleep and wake up. There, um, we know that someone was talking about some sort of breathable liquid solution to get there fast, but uh, it's not. I don't, I don't. I don't really know who who would be comfortable with that kind of a solution. I, I just don't know. I mean, I, I confess, I'm not. Um, I'm. I. I have not studied the culture of the LDS mm, in, in mm. great detail. You know, just what we get taught in schools. And you know, oh, what well, you get taught we, in schools is not the same. And, and, so, Esther, ask ask them what, what they would want out of, what, yeah. what their preferred version would be. I, and I, and you, you see the nodding because there's a lot of nodding that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm just very curious. Are there things that are taboo? Are there preferred oh, well, options? The, right now, um, I know the people that are investing in this, that are contributing to our campaign to raise funds for this, are interested in seeing where it's going to go. I mean, obviously, we want, we'd we love to have even our children's children see, to see the space, but some of us would like to see it. So I think the, the cryogenic solution sounds intriguing, but we need to see the numbers on it. We need to see it actually, it doesn't it actually work. No one's pulled that off for a duration of time like they're like we need. I mean, mm. a little bit of, we, we've seen people have had like limbs frozen or something like that in, in terms of like, you know, a severe case or injury, but mm. to freeze a whole body for 50 to 100 years, I, I we'd have to see some serious test results for that to occur. Of course, serious promises. of course, of course. Would they need to see that happen? Would they need to wait 50 years? Are they willing they to wait 50 to, years for uh, the test results? You want to ask them that, Esther? Yep. Yeah. yeah. If Tamsin see, is, is feeding something, I will say it. A proof of concept, numbers, data studies, uh, stuff like that. And uh, that's what we're hoping to see a bit of tomorrow, actually, from everybody is these different uh, solutions and the viability of them and what they have going on. Um, Sharing that with uh, Valentine and with Fred. But at the end of the day, I suppose it's it's a, all a leap of faith. Absolutely. I mean, and that's I mean that's what got us. That's what got you. It doesn't matter what religion you're from, what you believe. All of us got this far out in the solstice because of those leaps of faith, and that's exactly who are we not to take that leap of faith ourselves to tell steady. That's just so inspiring as a human story. Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, look, we, this is someone else like, uh, you can see the, the, the I'm interns. sure I don't want to take up too oh, much please. of your time. Well, we look forward to hearing from you tomorrow and uh, hopefully you'll show up at our meeting. Uh, I hear that the conference room is quite exquisite. They say there's real wood. No, another fine thing we will be bringing with us. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and she kind of goes, oh, hello. And someone else is reading and stuff like that too. And I melt back towards yeah. okay. the epicenter of all things, which is to say, Fred. Just stand here and let the let the wheel turn, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> was having hearing all this at the same time, I do say, um, Tycho intends to propose world ships. Have you done any work at all with cryogenics? Maybe a combined solution: some cryogenics, some generational. This is the Valentine. Or are you talking Tycho? This is just a oh, Tycho. Tycho. Oh, it's like cryogenics. He's like, nah, that that stuff's... I don't think it's viable right now. Uh, I've heard rumors Pope thinks it is, but I think Pope's a dreamer. I think Pope wants to get to another star himself, and I think his only chance at this point is to freeze himself. Oh, so, mm. uh, I mean, look, I... I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't... I don't agree with using people as 
guinea pigs. I'd rather go with a secure solution that I know people are going to survive and live a life that they want to live as. But Pope's more ambitious than us, I suppose, at times. If he can convince them that he can deliver, then this might be a wrap for all of us. So are you prepared to counter that if that's the argument he makes? Um, our main argument is that we will, is to make sure we ins- our ship that we build enshrines the Latter-day Saints values, culture, way of life for them um, and gets them there. So we're looking more at, uh, that's why we're trying to make it so big. Uh, and we're also, um, they're asking for 5,000 people to go. We think we can pull off seven to 8,000. Hmm. Well, I'd definitely be ready to lead with that because I don't know what he has planned, but I'm pretty sure he thinks this is already a wrap. And quite frankly, I don't oh. think he would have brought oh. us all out here if he really thought there was a chance he was barring, gonna lose. I think barring some misfortune on his team's part, uh, uh, a son of a bitch's confidence. You can tell you, you Tycho's get a little like you, he's got a little tilted here. The moment he says, barring some misfortune on his part, my eyes kind of unconsciously float towards Cecilia over there. <laughs> and I just say, Mr. Tycho, I think uh, we've taken up enough of your oh, time. Well, uh, a pleasure, sir. And I, I, uh, I, make sure you give me a call if you ever uh, have move on to the next job or something like that. Uh, the hmm. can door and leadership skills, uh, something Tycho could use in the future. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. All right. And I actually move towards Cecilia <laughs> unless and I, something else and is I about s- to happen. I guess I see Fred move towards me, but I also know that there is a somebody in charge of cryo- cryogenics at Pope, and I really want to get in their head. Yeah, one Albert Perk. Okay, I really want to get to know Albert. Get to know what Albert wants. Okay. Um, so Albert's kind of sitting, he's got his own administrative assistant. You approach. Yeah. Um, do you want to try to make, wait for the assistant to be distracted to go just directly to the guy? Yes, Not absolutely. So yeah. he, you come up to him and he goes, oh, excuse me, he's like, oh, hello. Oh, oh, hello. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm Cecilia. Who are you with? Oh, uh, I'm with uh, Pope Enterprises. Uh, Dr. Albert Burke. Oh. Uh, Cecilia, uh, well, uh, you're here with one of the companies? Yes, I'm, I'm here with one of the, the smaller companies. Um, you know, I don't want to say this right away, but I don't think we're going to get this contract. And uh, you guys look so amazing. Uh, it's it's and tough I've, competition. Oh, uh, it's I just I've heard. So, I'm not a scientist, but I've heard so many good things about what you're I think working on uh, right over at Pope. He's been Miss, Mr. Pope has been more than generous with the funding and the endeavors to mm-hmm. to get out of the system. He's actually we've been working on this well before even uh, the Latter Day Saints were interested in uh, approaching this problem. Oh my gosh! Well, I you know I know that you are of course solidly supported by Pope Enterprises, but I I did want to say that there's been a shakeup um, at one of the other. Places I don't know if you've heard about it, um, but at at Mal Quick, yeah. there was just something that happened, and and I know that uh, the, they are, you know, Mal Mal Quick Science Division is is a mess right now. I I don't know. I don't even know what they're doing. They're moving funding around. Some of the researchers have been reassigned. I, there's some sort of shake up there. I, I that's not the kind of place I want to work. But Post had a solid vision for I mean decades. Oh, yeah, that completely makes sense. I. I think that if you want to stay at Pope and kind of go with the same thing you've been working on for decades, I guess I understand that. But if you want to go with something a little more visionary, maybe mm-hmm. think in that direction. I mean, what is it that you really want to work on? What is it that you haven't had I, a chance uh, to do? This, you, you you wouldn't believe what we're doing. I, I, I can't talk about it, but mm. It's this is going to game change. I, I think um, okay. we're our goal has been to we're going to give the people the stars, and those first people we're going to give the stars to are the Latter Day Saints. I it's unbelievable. We, I have a lot of confidence in this project. You you have no clue. I, oh. I wish I could tell you more. Oh no, Albert. I completely understand that you can't tell me more right now. But you know, let's stay in touch. I'm Cecilia. Yeah. And, drop um, a bug. Drop a I'm going to drop Actually, a bug. Actually, I'm going to so. do you one better, Tamsin. He goes to shoot his deets over, and you know there's a handshake between the two terminals. Yes. yes. You think you could, yes. you could click in there uh, through through Cecilia's thing. So I'm going to give you the technology test. Now, this is not going to be an easy one, but it's a tech test. 
So give me this okay. one here. Let's see if we can uh, we can have while, this. Many rerolls. While she's resolving this, and we do have rerolls, and please send us more. I also asked you a question there via the Zoom. Oh, story sorry, Tyler. Um, which dude? I'm- this guy. This this guy right here that they're talking to. Oh, uh, I, that would be an extreme solution. Okay, got it. Uh, but you don't want to leave a trace that anything happened. So, got it. Uh, but good, 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 good hustle. Yeah. You know what? We're here among friends. I asked, is this the type of person I throw out in airlock? I'm like, I can solve this problem real quick. I'm like, um, hey, let me just talk to you right over uh, here, buddy. But <laughs> yeah, better view. <laughs> uh, Jen, what'd you get? Uh, in, in eighteen. 18, that includes the plus seven? Yes. Okay. Wait. Yes. I'm going to use the reroll. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Get the big numbers here. Mm hmm. Also, keep sending the rerolls. I know we don't have a lot of time left, but this exactly is when they the mean same. the most yep. to their people. One more time. Exactly we'll burn, we'll burn the through. Same. We got a few more. Yeah. Exactly, exactly the same numbers. Six, four, one. Ugh. Wowee. And I think on the same dice, too. <laughs> one more try. Give me another one. Worse. All right. Oh. Four, three, one. Uh, four, three, one. All right, that one's not bad. Uh, so I'm going to have you push that to a six using some fortune. That'll be six fortune. And mm-hmm. that'll give you a 20 total. So um, you go ahead and you, like, and you barely pull it off. You hack through it. You get it, you get it barely in there. Um, you do link in and you just start grabbing data, whatever's on his terminal, whatever's on his terminal. Okay. Um, you pull it down. You start sipping through it. Um, you get a, you get a, pretty good portion of their presentation of what their main pitch is. This cryogenic thing is in there. This uh, ship that can go far uh, for a long time, 100 years things. The cryogenic stuff has happened, but not on a long term. So the question is, how are they doing it? Well, uh, give me actually, uh, yeah, yeah, this is fine. Oh, you know what? Fine. It, you, can oh, okay. you can send it to another expert if you want to also, but it is pretty technical in how they're, how they're getting the cryogenics to work. Okay. Uh, I think I'm probably the best bet on this, okay. maybe, because I, for the tech stuff. It, it looks like a, uh, what do I have you roll Or is, uh, is it a, is it a Marv? Marv could do it and you could do it, uh, both simultaneously. Actually, I'll both roll. You guys both roll technology, Jen, and then, uh, Marv roll engineering. Sure. Not great. Sixteen. Uh, that's a that's a eighteen for me, but uh, I could burn some fortune burn some if fortune I needed to can, make yes. that higher. Make that higher. Yeah, yeah sure. Let's. Well, I, I, I'll make it a twenty-one for All right, you. All right, very nice. And then Jen, what'd you get? Uh, a sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Um. Jen, you go through and like, there's this whole slide section about it, uh, talking about like AI controls of biometrics and all this stuff. Um, Marv, you kind of get into it and it looks like they have some sort of advanced, like individualistic control system for the cryogenic pods they're working on. So it's a, not a matter of like a one size fits all thing or they just figure out how to freeze you initially. This thing adapts as conditions change over time. Um, it is, it looks, Based on their test trials with animals, it looks pretty solid. Okay. Are there any things about it that seem in direct conflict with the, the values of the culture? Like it's caffeine, culture. caffeine based freeze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Caffeine and I mean, vodka is what they put I don't know. You yeah, in. I don't. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, you, well, the idea that that it adapts to your body, that maybe there's something in there, maybe there's, I mean, um, it's worth asking. It looks like, no, you, you don't, this would be an Esther question, but yeah, you don't, you don't see anything immediately there. Um, it looks pretty neutral in terms of like, uh, you do have to kind of take some initial drugs to keep the cryogenics going and everything like that for the time being. And they do get hooked up to some machines and everything to monitor themselves. Um, and then there's like an emergency kind of, you know, D, you know, D cryo thing. But I mean, it's well thought out and looks very elaborate and uh, not cheap. How does it, uh, how does it, would it mesh with the Tycho ideas? Uh, this one is pr- more of a priority of getting them there fast. Tycho is more of like, we'll get you there and we'll let you, pr- your culture will be preserved and represented when you get there. This one is much more technical, but much more viable in terms, at least based on the data that's provided. 
Is there a way to sabotage their, their plans? Uh, it is completely contingent on the AI that they have developed. Um, the, the, the system they've trained to, to operate this stuff. Now the question would be is, where are they developing it? So they don't have a present, like, but they have proof of concept and everything. Where where are they developing it? Where are they based? Um, nothing here is saying where it is, but uh, you know how the docks work at Ceres and how like you have access to all the information of coming and going to ships. Um, it would be pretty easy to actually like just monitor one of their ships and find out where it's going or where where it goes dark and then kind of okay. extrapolate. There's one thing Belters love, it's orbital mechanics because they're pretty consistent. <laughs> so yeah. uh, you might be able to figure that out, but that might be a home, uh, home team thing. Uh, as far as sabotaging their plans, it's not something you would be able to do here, but something that could be a next step project. Uh, maybe, okay. and maybe one you would be involved in, maybe one you wouldn't be involved in. Okay, let's download it. Okay. Um, and let's, uh, Cecilia, we've got to we've got to get Pope out of the game. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. De so deploy, I, I try to play the flask, maybe. Yeah, let's get him to oversleep the meeting. Oh uh, well. Okay. Uh, so I Almost. guess I'm still. I just exchanged the information with uh, with dear Albert, um, and I'm just gonna say, Albert, listen. I know how these things are. <sighs> let's just take the edge off a little bit. You know, just. Here, come to the corner with me. We're just gonna share a little swig because I know how hard you're working. I know how hard I'm working. Whew. And I need a break. Persuasion check versus his self-discipline. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, okay. I, I gotta re-roll the GM, so I'm gonna read that one. I have a five, Ooh. a three, and then a three on my drama die. All right. Um, you go to the, and he, he kind of looks at you. He rolled uh, a lot higher and he goes, <laughs> um, he goes, um, no, uh, no, I, you know, I appreciate your offer, but uh, where I come, I'm, uh, it's kind of part of my contract is to play by the rules here today. I, I need our time, uh, you know, I'm going to have a drink with a lovely, lovely woman would be fantastic, but it's not, not in the car tonight. I, I appreciate it, though. And he, he kind of um, like, <laughs> saunters off as, as, as he declines your effort. Is it, is it possible? Oh, sorry. I was going to say, no, go could could Tamsin also distract? Because now she has access to his terminal. Oh, she had it for Is briefly. There... It's it got oh, cut okay. off once it once you guys got the handshake done. Never mind. Um, they do have rooms. I will say that. Do um, you? I mean, we can we can try and lock him in his room, but do you want to try and persuade him away from the party and to try and uh say hey look we're a small company but we're growing fast they, we have a private backer who's throwing a lot of money at us yeah i mean all right let's let's if you try, wanna i tried if, the if booze, you're interested I tried the competitor. <laughs> okay so i guess i'll i'll i Cecilia doesn't chase, but she's going to walk briskly behind Albert and uh, just tap him on the shoulder again and be like, listen, I, I also just didn't want to tell you this at first, but we have a pretty large backer behind us. And I know that you have some sweet facilities at Pope, but what if you, I mean, what if you really were the head of your own lab and you could build whatever you wanted we have the finances for you to be able to do that. You're saying that to Perk? Yeah. He goes, um, yeah, I, I have my own asteroid base that I'm doing that on right now. You just see our facilities. It's it's, it's, it's amazing, but I, I can't really talk about that anymore. Uh, this, this is lovely and I appreciate it, but uh, I, I wish you guys to Valentine, I need um I need some some piece of tech or and something then, they won't um, know yet. Uh B Dave, I sent you a message on Zoom. Excellent. Sorry. I have the chat over here. Sure. Uh and when uh, just just clarifying, when you say some piece of tech, you, something that uh, they're going to need, something that we have that they're is gonna be intimidating or the idea is to basically uh say like as if it were a sneak peek of of stuff that he could be working on take what he's got and then take it further yeah uh, okay okay all right so purely theoretical uh I, heavy water 
uh, nuclear fusion. I think I think we could find a way to use heavy water to um, uh, create a more efficient power source. Uh, it, 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 it's really theoretical because there's no source of heavy water reliable enough for us to do it. But in theory, if we could create it, I think it's possible to create like a, a, a better fuel. Okay. Is that what you're, is that right. you're having your feet into Cecilia? Yeah, yeah. So I'm getting, I'm getting this in my ear. And once yeah. again, I'm not a technical person, yeah. but I'm sure going to make it sound like I am. So yeah. now we bluff. Uh, <laughs> I just, I want to say, I want to say four words to you, Albert, Al, if I can call you that. Um, yeah, sure. Heavy, heavy water, nuclear fusion. Okay, now I know this is so cutting edge. Well, I mean, uh, they, they use heavy water in standard fusion re reactors to absorb the, uh, th that's pretty standard, but, um, heavy but water is what if it harder. was, I mean, really as a power source? I mean, that's how they do it right now, but I mean, it's in limited supply. If we could find some sort of high density amount of the heavy water, I mean, it could change the way fusion operates, absolutely. Well, what if I said we do have that? We know where we can get a lot of it. Uh, I mean, like on Tal Theti, maybe? Like, I don't, I mean, they've surveyed oh. water in this area, in, in this solar system for centuries. I, I can't say where, because <laughs> that's a trade secret, but Give me I'm a going to uh, give me a uh, deception check. Here. Give me the big deception check. And then, and, and Fred, okay. you're kind of watching Cecilia and like Marv and them all work right now. Um, after... I, I, I okay. Kinda... A five, a four, and a four. He goes, I mean, if you have something like that, that'd be great. And I'll, I'll pass the details on to Mr. Pope. Um, but fusion, it's not really my, my work. Um, yeah, but that sounds interesting. I just come over the comms quietly and I say Cecilia um, find out where you can get together with this guy in a couple of days he likes you and even if we can't stop them here today yeah. we find out where to hit them later Al, we got a long time before this exit goes to market okay Al I you know I, I'm so glad we got to talk um, oh, thank oh. you for saying I'm lovely <laughs> oh, I, I, mean, I hope that we can why don't we meet up again in a couple days when you know this is all settled and you and I can have a proper drink? Well, Shh, just don't tell me, them. Me and the team are going to make a stopover at Callisto on the way back. Um, oh. It's not fancy, but they have they have nice shipyards, and we got to do some consulting real quick and some contract work there real quick. But um, I'll be there um, about a about a week and a half. I'll and I'll end up there, and I'll, I got a few days, a few weeks out there. So that'd be if you want to do that. Um, I'm not sure which way which way neck of the woods uh, you're. Oh, I I will make sure that we make it over to your neck of the woods. Yeah, not I just quick. Uh, I say, I sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. I just say over the comms, checkmate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he basically says, yeah, I have, I have a I have a I have to catch another ship out there. But yeah, that sounds great. Oh, thank you, Al. It's so nice to be able to to chat with somebody so intelligent. I want to definitely hear more about what you're working on when you can tell me, of course. Um, Pope comes by and. After he talked to the, the Latter Day Saints a little bit, and he goes over to Fred, and he goes, uh, "Your team, I, I, you didn't have, you didn't feel obligated to go speak to the elders or the high priest or anything." I wanted to make sure that uh, the host of this fine assemblage had an opportunity to present himself. Um, also, um, let's be honest, I wasn't exactly sure that they would want to speak to me directly. It is an image problem. I, I have a whole team that handles mine, honestly, and uh, it would take a legion to handle yours, my friend. <laughs> kind of laughs. But he likes just... he likes you. Can you can you do anything to make him distrust Al? Hmm. We are we are hmm. we are short on time for this contract. We yeah. gotta lock it down hmm. before tomorrow. I say um Image is only an issue if you're trying to run from the past. I decided to make amends the old fashioned way. Well, my friend, I well, well, Colonel Johnson, I plan on um, running to the future. And the future is next star over. Looking forward to it. I, you uh, think uh, you personally are sort of your children's children's children type deal? <laughs> I'm interested in a legacy, and I 
don't think I need children to make that legacy happen. But I appreciate it. My my ex-wives would say different, but hmm. we'll see you in the stars, sir. <laughs> yeah, I probably should uh, at least show my face. Attempt to to the elders. Uh, has Esther returned? Oh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm now yeah. in your yeah. orbit. I just, when, when I see her there, I just say, uh, maybe I'll, I'll allow our young scholar here to take the point in the introductions. But uh, good luck tomorrow, Mr. Pope. You too, sir. It was excellent meeting you. And he kind of waves cameras and walks off to whoever else. Um, do you guys want to uh, speak to the elders or uh, what else is going on here? Do you think it would behoove us to speak to the elders for the time being, or with the information we've already gotten, is it kind of enough for the ethos of what we're here for? You, you, you feel that as a in your your mind, your, the wheels within wheels moving. You got what you need to do the next move. This was just the first step. This was the okay. first step. I don't approach the elders because, again, I. I I know my reputation, you, but if at you, any point and you notice make, that their their younger assistant, the missionary, she keeps an eye on you and is always kind of in between you and them. I will say, if at any point I make eye contact, I do just sort of give them one of those. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they, they kind of look back and and they yeah. just kind of like they don't like give you an eye roll. They just kind of look and then keep on moving. They don't. There's no disrespect, no respect type of thing. Just kind of. So anyway, that's when I started blasting. No, uh, I, <laughs> you should have airlocked Albert. <laughs> you just you wanted to lock in that butcher legacy. Yeah, he's and, uh, I'm just the, saying. The, the butcher of Renia, Renia Rise Resorts. <laughs> it's true. You know, it's you're only known for your yeah. most recent act this is of barbarism. True. This is true. You know? Maybe. Uh, but, uh, do we want to see if we can get everybody outside to see the uh, Aurora? Yeah. Maybe. I mean, that could be I, an I, excuse to leave. Yeah, I, I do sort of come over the comms when we have a free moment, and I say, uh, we've got what we needed. We still need to watch how the rest of this plays out, but if even if we only know that their most vital people are going to be at that place for a week and a half, that's enough for us to work with. Maybe worth it trying to plant some doubt about the uh, feasibility of cryogenics if it's untested. Uh... I, I suppose uh, there's enough um, uncertainty there that they could uh, perhaps not want to be the first ones to do this, and that may not work for their timeline, but that's all I can figure at this point. Hmm. Well, let's see when Pope shows his cards tomorrow. Um, you head out to the, the dome. You guys are on the open. Um, you know, some of you feel like maybe there's more to do, and what is the battle? Is, is it the war, or is the battle really just this? Is this just one battle of this, of this war, of this conflict? Is this just the one moment you guys need to get the step, or is this the? Is this it? Some of you like think is dissatisfied. Some of you maybe want to continue on helping with the cause, um, but you can tell. I, I suppose Fred seems satisfied with the work. Is that a fair assessment? Mm -hmm. I'm already planning the, 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 the subjugation of these people a week from now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm like, small team, go in on the freighter. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah, right. pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think um, in closing, I would say any kind of words you have for the team there, Fred, or do they want to have any words for each other in terms of this, uh, and enjoying the vacation such, too, the, the nice scenery. And you can see those kind of borealis kind of occurring with the sulfur burning <laughs> up in the atmosphere of the electromagnetics and such. I will just say when we all kind of get out in person, even a place where we can see Tamsin physically, I say, um, some of you I know and have worked with, some of you probably only know me by reputation, and you might have thought I'd have handled things here a little bit differently, especially with all these easy access to airlocks, but, um... I was I prepared for violence, sir. It's good. You should always be prepared for violence. It's just, um, shouldn't be the first step. But it may well be the last step. As long as we get the Tycho contract to ultimately prevail, that's all that matters. Send cheers to yeah. them with whatever alcohol we can get out here. Yeah, now and you guys, you have a Cecilia spike your one's drink real quick. <laughs> Cecilia I, I, has a flask. Yeah. In a... I, 
I, I will just say for those of you that have tuned in for this charity game thank you very much uh, but this adventure is kind of a prequel for a thing that definitely happens next yes. so that's uh <laughs> don't, don't feel like we're just letting these people go they no get no got, they no. just don't get got by us today. i i <laughs> yes absolutely well uh <laughs> the seeds have been planted for for Tycho to get the contract uh, the next steps are up to the OPA and Fred Johnson in his tactical mind to figure out the next steps to make this occur and happen and to ensure the future of the belt. Um, I gotta end it there, I guess. That's gonna be the, the end of the game uh, for this one. Um, I won't kid you, I wrote three acts. You guys got through one act. Of course we did. <laughs> um, Jeez. Uh, John, you're lucky you when you said spa, we didn't turn this into a spa episode. It has been done <laughs> to me. I'm doing it to somebody at some point. Space spa. Space mm -hmm. spa. Yeah, yeah. I, I was Space prepared spa. to go to the spa. Yes. I, I wanted what, to what, print some luxury swimsuits. Why didn't yeah. we use the replicator? <laughs> I was going to say, when Fred shows up, he does look exceptionally well moisturized and <laughs> mani pedi You know, he's oh, like, man. what? I was... He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, oh man, I'm limber. I'm ready to talk to some more. Do this thing. <laughs> you know? Luxury tankinis for everyone. Exactly, exactly. Um, but look, uh, yeah, th thank you for experiencing my, my kind of rendition of the expanse and telling the stories in the, in the corners of it. Most of all, thank you guys for annihilating our goal. Uh, we're at $2,255, $2,255. That's, that's a phenomenal awesome. amount. Uh, over four times uh, the, the goal we started with. You guys rock. Uh, I This means so much to me. I started this show. I've been, it'll be two years in, in May. Uh, for those who don't know, I run this weekly. We have 140 hours plus of footage. Now <laughs> close to 150 hours with this show. Um, we, we play in the expanse. We have a lot of fun with it, but I never dreamed of having an amazing cast like this, uh, doing an amazing cause, having amazing people come in and help out. Uh, it's my birthday like on Monday, so this was my, my big celebration thing doing this. Um, you guys, it, 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 it means the world to me on so, so many fronts. So thank you everyone for that. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Hey, and huzzah to World Central Kitchen. I will say, if I might advocate, if there was any unused dice rolls, uh, kick them over, kick them over to the stream. You okay, know? Help, you help, help, they help them. them. That, that can be the logistics that we're funneling over and information <laughs> you're, I mean, that you're, they got you're, from you're, us. You're planning for the future of the belt, and they are fighting for the future of the belt, so your, your re-rolls continue on the future. There it is. Um, there the, it is. Exactly. The re-rolls for the children. Uh, but, um, look, we also have our giveaway through Dragonburn. Um, you guys can enter that still. Uh, we'll pull a winner here momentarily. Uh, the word is Aberaxis to put in the chat and you'll be entered to win. Uh, you can see the fine products there that Jen is uh, displaying, amazing stuff. Um, I'd like everyone just, uh, if you want to remind them who you are, anything like that, anything you want to shout out, uh, you guys have this forum to use as you please. Um, I Yeah, I'm happy and then you guys have fun, it was okay? Absolutely. And, did, and didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you that Goldie is terrifying? And this is character like it's like scary to listen to. She's no, the reverse no, flash of Goldie's. Yes. Yeah. That is, John. That is competence porn, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. It I is. also messaged her privately, yeah. like that. It, I have met that person. Or that was the one that went in the. It, I've met that person, <laughs> and it's the scariest thing because they're just so on it. Uh, I got asked if the giveaway. It's worldwide. amazing. It's uh, so good. I believe so. And I have to say that as a person playing it, it's really hilarious to play somebody who's like totally the opposite, who's like money, 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 and I'll do anything and I'll throw anyone under the bus. So it's like, I just have to think, what would I never do? And that's exactly how I play her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I would like, I would never physically go separate a fight at a party. That's the first thing I do. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and I she's really... so fantastic. You, you're amazing. Like <laughs> the expanse where we play nightmare versions well, I, of ourselves yes, sometimes. Nightmare versions. Yeah, I, I refer to my game as I, we have two nicknames for it. It's a uh, schlubs in space or uh, middle management in space. The RPG. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's Thanks, it. Green Ronin. Thanks, Green Ronin. Yeah, for making middle management in space the RPG. Um, all right. Well, uh, I think I think we're good. I'm gonna go pull a winner real quick uh, off my mm. off my giveaway here. Let me go ahead and where's my button? There it is. Uh, hit roll it, and we get a winner. And our winner is Massive Damage Adventures. Holy crap! Hey. Uh, they, Congratulations! That's, that's actually uh, that's actually 
<laughs> this is weird. That's our that's my buddy Merrick, who also runs an Expanse uh, stream. And I actually consulted with him a little bit, showed him my storyline for this to make sure it was actually comp, you know, competent. Uh, him and my buddy Jeremy Hunter were people I consulted with about my game here and see if it worked. And they were fantastic and I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, you get to check them out, please check them out too. Um, but I'm glad to see someone, uh, I'm glad to see someone get this. And once again, Dragonburn, you guys rock. I appreciate it so much for doing this. Last minute, we barely put it together, but it happened. And you guys made it happen. $2,255 $2, for World Central Kitchen. That'll go a long way. If you a lot of people, you guys that did the work today, and I appreciate you guys hanging out with us and chilling. Josh, freaking four timer now. You might be the first five timer for the game. Uh, mm -hmm. And always a pleasure to have uh, Marv on. Uh, Emily, always a pleasure. Your character, I, I, I wasn't sure how you were going to kind of, I don't say demature the character, but, but you really did a good job with it. Uh, compared to the also time. a nightmare version of my actual self as a graduate student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that I think about it, do I want Esther in a class? Um, <laughs> yes! Um, yes, yes, you do. <laughs> uh, Jen, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, it's fantastic. You're, you have been uh, someone I've been wanting to play with for a long time. Uh, I continue right to be am you. amazed. Oh, 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 all right. Um, uh, I, I, I'm always amazed at all the work you're doing. It's phenomenal. And I hope you had a good time with your first time in the Expanse universe. Um, Gold, thanks this for class. coming on here. Come on here and just terrorizing all of us with this character. Cause like a lot of you, you don't get to play too often. But when you do, you bring it out. And it's like, I, I have clips of uh, the, the time you play with us. And I watch them once in a while where I need a good, where I need to like kind of get myself, I need to get my adrenaline up uh, to feel like I'm, you know, I can still be intimidated. Uh, cause hmm. you know, uh, the such B Dave, thank you for pulling this off. You did a great Fred Johnson. You were contemplative. Uh, you, you didn't have to bring out the butcher. Um, I, I felt I was, I was feeling it was getting close with Pope. Like this is the guy you want to bring out the butcher, but he hasn't threatened violence. And hmm. so I, I really liked that. Uh, and I, I hope everyone here had a fantastic time. And thank you. Good, sir. Again, happy birthday. Yeah. And, uh, happy thank birthday. Thank you all hey. who donated. Yeah. It's going to make a big difference for some people that need it. So. Absolutely. Yeah. You you guys that watched are the true stars. So many people donated. I know for the donators and I guess some people I work with, some people I've never heard of, which is awesome. Thank you guys for checking this out. That's it. That's all I got. I'm done. I got nothing. I'm, I'm out of ammo uh, and the like. So we're going to go ahead and play you out and uh, I'll have this up on the VOD for everybody. Hey. All right. All right. Uh, that's it. Say goodbye. Hey. Uh, later, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.